Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. Now, if this is the first time you're gracing us with your presence, welcome. We are super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. In that chat box, you enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Now, sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not, but either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care and sometimes life. Guys, as always, we're coming to you guys live on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and, and YouTube. It's our primary platform. Um, so if you feel free to hang out on, on any of those, feel free to be part of the conversation. For anyone that's tuning in on Instagram, uh, you guys are not going to see like any any images that I share, anything along those lines, but you can still feel free, feel free to be part of it. I will switch back and forth as I see questions pop up, and um, I'm going to make sure you guys also feel included. So guys, it's a slow time of the year. You know, it's it's Christmas time and you know holiday season. Things are slowing down. Grass is not growing nearly as much for most people. And I figured that tonight would be a great night to talk about, you know, during this downtime, what are some things that we can do to get our lawn in a better position to get set up for an awesome 2024 growing season, right? You know, the thing is best lawns start, best lawns in the spring start actually in the fall, right? With a lot of your preparation and that type of thing. So let's talk about some of those things. So the thing that I find, things that I've done, and I, I've recommended when people have emailed me and, and asked questions saying, hey, I'm, I'm looking to get ahead of the game. I want to create the lawn that's going to dominate the neighborhood for next year. How do I start? What can I do now to help with that? And the first thing I would say is get a soil test done. Soil testing, super important. It's it's literally the answer to the test when it comes to building out your nutrient program. Um, you know, one of the most common questions I get from people is what fertilizer should I be using on my lawn? And the, the way to answer that is with data using a soil test. So the one that I um, I particularly like and recommend is this one from my soil. Reason being is that these are really easy to use, right? I mean, it comes with everything you need from a standpoint of an 
envelope to mail it out. It comes with the ion exchange resin, which is the technology that my soul went with. It comes even with a little handy dandy scoop for collecting your sample, or not collecting your sample, but for transferring your sample into the, um, into the ion exchange resin. And then you drop this in the envelope, it's already prepaid, send it out and wait about a week or so. And then you'll get a, an email from them saying, hey guys, we looked over your soil test results. And here is what's good, bad, ugly, indifferent. And it's gonna give you the data to be able to formulate your nutrient program for next year. So really important to do that. I, I mean, I, I talk about it often enough, but really this time of year is a good time to just emphasize the importance of soil testing. Another benefit with going with the My Soil Kits is that the soil test data that you that they provide is available, you know, they save it on their portal. So if you do a soil test now and say you're doing one also in the spring or you do another one next year, as far as being able to easily compare how the soil is changing, like the direction the, the nutrient is, is moving in your soil, um, it makes it really easy to do that based on like a tool they have that's built into the portal. It doesn't cost you anything extra for that, right? It's all included whenever you, you buy one of these. So soil testing is thing one. If you've not done that, highly, highly, highly recommend that you invest in one. It's like the best $30 you'll spend in your lawn care program. As far as where you can get those, before we move on to our next point, go to the golf course lawn store, you go to shop, and then soil test kits and pH adjustments, right? Almost like it serves its own section, right? In there, you got several different options. You have just a standalone kit, which is what I just showed you. And for anyone that's new to this, I recommend this one, the starter pack, because it comes with the soil test kit and one of these fancy, you know, well, I always tell, joke with the guys at my soul, the over-engineered core, um, core collection tool, right? So as far as making it easy for you to collect samples throughout your property and then mix them, add them to the soil test kit and send them out, this makes life a lot easier. As far as how to use it, on all the soil test kit videos, you'll see, actually on all of them, you'll see um, a video showing how to, how to test your soil, showing how I like to do it, like how I, like how I space out collecting samples, that, that type of jazz, and then how to read your soil test. Like, you know, you get your data back, um, your, your results back, how do you actually make heads or tails out of it to, to develop your nutrient program? So all that is in the description of the soil test kits uh, on, the, on the Golf Course Lawn Store for all of them. So it doesn't matter which one you choose, you'll be able to find this under the how to use section. So it's really worth checking out if you decide to um, if you decide to go that route. It makes it, again, it's, it's really easy. It's, it's easier, it's about the easiest thing you can do in your lawn care, in your lawn care program other than like, maybe running an irrigation cycle. I guess running irrigation is probably a little bit easier than doing a soil test, but not by much, right? Not by much. I don't like running an irrigation cycle. There's not, there's practically no chance you're gonna injure your lawn by doing that. So you might even say that soil testing is easier than irrigation. So if you wanna get a soil test kit, you can pick that up right here in this link. This is gonna get you, um, it's all square away, that's where you can get that. All right, so we've covered thing one. Thing one is soil testing. You get the data to be able to figure out which fertilizer should I be using in my lawn, right? So that's thing one. The second, the second, and again, not as fun of a topic, but also super important, and it will actually save you money, is around the topic of pre-emergent planning. So the thing outside of which fertilizer should I use on my lawn, the, the question I get second most is, hey, I've got insert XYZ weed in my lawn, how do I get rid of it? And while there are, while you know, herbicides really fall into two major categories. You've got pre-emergent herbicides and post-emergent herbicides. Pre-emergent is the one that really doesn't get enough um, discussion. And it's one, again, one of the best investments you can make in your lawn care program. I mean, really the way I like to say, I like to um, tell people to use pre-emergent is really twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. And that's going to do a lot for reducing the, the amount of weeds you have in your lawn. So as far as like planning for next year, you gotta think, hey, in the spring, am I gonna go with prodiamine as my pre-emergent? I'm gonna go with dithiapyr as my pre-emergent? Am I gonna do like a single application or a split application? Like take some time to think about that. I lean towards doing, with prodiamine anyway, with doing a single application at the higher end of the application rate from my particular grass type. I have Bermuda grass. So I tend to get towards that uh, 0.80 ounces rate uh, per thousand square feet, and that served me very well. Some people like to split it up, but it really depends on what your preference is. You can get great results either way. So take some time to figure out what you wanna do for pre-emergent. It's, again, after soil testing, it's one of the most important things you can do that's going to save you money. Because if you look at like a bag of pre-emergent, it's like $60, $70. If you go with the uh, water dispersible granules, if you go like one of these guys, like one of the small ones like this, these are like 30 bucks, right? This covers 6,000 square feet. So as far as cost, Pre-emergent is a lot less expensive than buying herbicides like Celsius, like Sedgehammer, 
like uh, like certainty. I think I've got certainty up here somewhere. Uh, yeah, I do. I've got a box of certainty. Like these guys. These these are much more expensive uh, than than pre-emergence. So as far as preventing the problem before it becomes a problem, worth putting some some time and money into. Again, pre-emergence is one of the best investments you can make in your um in your lawn care program. As far as which ones I I like, I mean, for the fall, if you have warm season grass or sorry, warm season grass, then Spec a product called Spectacle Flow is excellent. It's about as good as you can get, in my opinion, for a fall pre-emergent for warm season turf. But if you want a pre-emergent to rule them all, whether you have cool season grass, warm season grass, and is also gonna be a little bit more cost effective, not quite as good, in my opinion, as Spectacle, but a, but a good, like, you know, it's it's a good, solid pre-emergent that's, that's gonna, again, it's gonna cover you. It's not gonna break the bank. Really hard to, uh, to beat Prodiamine. As far as where you can get that on the golf course lawn store, if you go to shop and then our carefully curated weed killer section, I know it could be called herbicides, but most people know it as weed killer. So, and you guys in the know, you know the difference between herbicides and weed killer. You know, herbicides are actual correct name, but we just call it weed killer because it's easier for people to find it that way. All right, so you go to shop and then weed killer, and then you move over to pre-emergent, and that's going to show you the various options we have. Now, Spectacle Flow again. This is your fall pre-emergent. It's an excellent choice for warm season turf in the September, December timeframe. Like if you wanna do split apps, it's a great, great product for that. But for your spring, which is what we're talking about, getting ready for next year, going with prodiamine in a granular form, dithiapyr in a granular form, or prodiamine as a water dispersal granule, these are like, these will become liquids that you can spray, are excellent choices. So prodiamine is more than likely what I'm gonna use on my lawn this upcoming spring. So that is, uh, is what I would say as far as you know, a great choice for um, for your spring pre-emergent. So, so think about that. Think which way you want to go as far as spring pre-emergent. And if you're looking at where you can find that, I will link that here in the chat for you now. All right. So we've covered our soil test kit. We've covered our pre-emergence, our weed prevention. Next is the fun part, right? That we start getting into like applying things that are going to make our grass green, right? So something you can do now depending on where you live in the country. If you live in the Southeast United States, you live somewhere where the ground doesn't freeze and you just itch and you wanna do something that you can apply to your lawn now that's gonna help improve things to get you in a, in a good spot for next year. It's really, really hard to pass up a, um, a granular biosimilant that I, I, love on my, I love and use on my lawn. It's called Essential G. The nice thing about Essential G, it's not a fertilizer, so you're not gonna burn your grass by using it. You can apply it to a lawn that's actively growing. You can apply it to a dormant lawn. And it's it's only going to help increase the amount of organic material in your soil, increase biochar, um, the amount of biochar content, which is going to help improve nutrient availability. You're going to get more out of the fertilizers you apply, and it's something you can do now. So if you're looking for something to scratch that itch of applying, you know, a product to your lawn, Essential G is something you can you can absolutely do. As far as where you can find that, if you go to shop and then Mirimichi Green Biosimilants, and there it is, front and center, the first kit on the block, Essential G. Can't go wrong with that. I apply this every month on my lawn. I mean, I, 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 my, my catch line is, every, I apply it every month as long as the ground isn't frozen. And in Georgia, the ground never really freezes here. So Essential G goes down every month on my lawn. All right, the final thing, the piece de resistance, the thing that people love to put on their lawns more, probably more than anything else, and unfortunately tend to abuse more than anything else on their lawn, is fertilizer. So you've done your soil test, you've got your pre-emergent planning done, you got your pre, you got your essential G, and now you're thinking, based on my soil test data, which you know, you'll know you get the results and it'll tell you exactly where the deficiencies are, which fertilizer should I be using to open up the season with next year? So there's a couple different ways of doing of looking at this. I can tell you what I do. So I like to use a fertilizer that, tend, that has a bit more potassium in it to begin the season and also to end the season. So when the lawn is transitioning out of the, out of the cooler temperatures, when it's waking up, coming out of dormancy, I like a higher potassium fertilizer to kick the season off. The one that I go is, if you go to shop and then lawn fertilizer, I like to use a higher potassium one like, the, like this one, the Stress 12024 from Lebanon Turf. Excellent product. Uh, this is what I use at the beginning of the year. And then again, at the, the beginning of the season, and again, at the end of the season. So like March's timeframe, and then again in October is when, for me, was when I'd use this. If you have cool season grass, you can also use this during the summer. But for me, with a warm season lawn, uh, this is primarily what I use. So, so the Stress 12 Zero 24 to start the season out, and then Humic Max is, does most of the heavy lifting. So if you're looking for something to get ahead of the game and have your, your, your stack ready for when the season starts, picking up a bag of, um, of a higher potassium fertilizer is a good call. It's a good call. And as far as we can get that, I will link that for you guys in the chat. And uh, and hopefully 
you get some uh, some value out of this. So uh, let's see, fertilizer to start 2024. I'm typing 2023, 2024 is almost here, right? Boom, there we go. Cool, so you guys got it. Your soil tests, your pre-emergent, your granular biostimulant, and your fertilizers. Hopefully that little monologue helps get you guys off on the right foot. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying something new as far as the format as of the live stream to kind of like do like a knowledge drop at the beginning and then we can go jump into questions. Well, you guys let me know if you guys like this format or not, but I figure it's something that um, answers a, a lot of questions that I've been getting here recently this time of year. So I can just say, hey, go watch the last live stream. Just watch the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes of it. And it's going to give you a, a compressed, um, you know, guide as far as my thoughts on, 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 on how to build out or how to start a season for success um, for next year. So hope that helps. All right. Let's see who we have in the live stream this evening. We got, um, we got our folks, the usual suspects here on uh, Instagram and kicking it off. We got to start off with the super chat. See, Ted, I like you, man. You're my man. It's, it's a, it is a season for giving. I love the support. Thank you so much for the super chat. We're going to start off with you. Super chat received. I'm going to try and read it how I imagine Ted would say this. He says, my man. I think that's how he would say it. My man. I am nonstop getting compliments on my lawn. All I see are the blemishes. I can't wait for spring so I can get back to work. I'll grab the bio and soul test this weekend off your store. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it so much, Ted. Uh, yeah, here's the thing, that's not uncommon. That's not uncommon. It's not uncommon that when you look at your lawn because you look at it all the time and it's your baby and it's you, you put a lot of your time into, all you see are the areas that could be better. It's completely normal. I do the same thing with my lawn. I mean, there's a, there's a couple areas that um, you guys really see it, but it's between um, Alex's lawn and, and my lawn. There's like a, a little area where it's um, like going into the swale where water doesn't really sit. And that area just take, and it doesn't get as much sunlight. That area takes the longest to come out of dormancy. And I think is I have to pass it every single time I mow the back lawn. So, uh, so yeah, everyone has that in their lawn. There's areas that, you know, are your shining beacon of awesomeness. And there are areas that just need a little bit of work. And every Every turf is every, every turf is like that. I'm sure if you asked someone that does like a professional sports that does professional sports for a living, if you asked Devin if he were on here, I'm sure even sure on his golf course he's gonna say, oh yeah, this hole, this tee box, this is like my. If I have to show anyone, take a picture of it, this is the one that I'm gonna show off. This represents my best work. There's some other problem children along the lines, and that's just the way it is. I'm kind of like life, right? I mean, everything in life isn't always perfect all the time, so it's not really reasonable for us to expect our lawns to be perfect all all the time i appreciate the support man um you know thanks so much for uh for supporting the the store and the, the channel it really does mean a lot and 2024 is going to be here before you know it you know so good job getting ahead of the game and of course with you being our first super chat of the evening there you go sir your name in lights for whatever that means to you Thanks again for the for the super chat, sir. I appreciate the love and support. And Ted is leaving us with everyone hit that like button. Definitely, guys. I know it's a slower night, but definitely hit that like button. It's a free way to support the channel. Free way. You know, here's the thing. Guys, this this week as well. Now, you know, I'm recovering from the issue with Marquise. You know, the last past couple of weeks, we had some struggles on the channel. The mole was acting up, was messing up my lawn. You know, he got taken out. You know, we, we've, uh, we've, we came out victorious. But you know what? You guys are kind of a sadistic bunch. Like, um, you know, I, I thought you guys just be cool about it and just be like, hey, man, you know, good job. Really appreciate you sharing the whole issue with the mole, you know, with us. And we learned some cool tips. But no, no, several of you took this as an opportunity. You guys know this is like a a, a special topic for me. Like I, I normally I'm pretty even keel kind of guy. But a mole damage in my lawn is one of those things that, you know, kind of kind of brings out the dark side. That and fantasy football. Right. So some of you guys sent. um I don't know if you call them gifts. I don't know if you'd call them jabs, but I will show them off in good fun. So, uh, Mark Romano, you see him here on the live stream sometimes from um, from Hawaii. He thought it would be funny to send me a uh, it's horrible a baby Marquise because he knows how much I like moles. So he sent this to me as a gift. I get to focus. You see now now is that nice? Is that called for? I don't think that's called for. I think it's I think it's pretty ugly. I think it's a pretty Ugly thing to uh, to do, but I guess this is how you're raised. I guess you know, you know, like a home training. This is this is the kind of thing you do to people that just went through a traumatic experience. And uh, noted, sir, noted. And if that wasn't bad enough, if that wasn't bad enough, uh, Robert Rainey, who is a um, is a member of the Golf Course Lawn Academy, he said he's going to take it up a notch on the topic of messing with Ron and you know you know play, playing with my emotions. 
sent me a picture. You'd think he sent me a picture of his lawn, sent me a picture of his mower, something kind of cool. But no, but no. You guys, if you guys saw the thumbnail for the live stream, you've already seen what I'm about to show you, but this is what this man sent me in the mail. Now think about it. He took time out of his day to go, I mean, this is probably a picture or a print someone, someone had, but to get this created, to send this to me. Now, guys, is this nice? I mean, this definitely points to a lack of home training. This, this, this is someone that just, um, it's not right, man. Just not, I mean, kind of says, speaks for itself, right? You can almost have like some 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 um, some some quiet music, like Arms of the Angel playing in the background. You know, a little, a little moment of silence from Marquise, a little Marquise the Mole. Kind of show show a picture of him. You know. So I hope you enjoy that, Robert. Thank you so much for the gift. I think. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put it. I don't know. I was I was thinking there, but I mean, I, I can't have him be that prominent. You know, I'll think of somewhere else. I've got a spot here on the wall, but you guys are not gonna be able to see that. So I'll hang it up. But thank you. I think so much for. Um, for a picture of Marquise, you know, may he rest in peace, and uh, hopefully his buddies get the idea to not uh, to not come back. This is not not the place for it. So, all right, on to questions and comments. Now that we've gotten all the um, all the savagery out of the way, you guys are terrible, man. You guys are just you got, again l lack of home training is what this is. What, what like this is exactly what this points to. All right, first up, we got Papa Mo's Low. He says, hello, Ron and everyone. What's going on, Papa Mo's Low? Thanks for coming and hanging out in the live stream. I appreciate you. And then Robert Rady saying, good evening, everyone. Whatever. That, and it's, you, see, you see what he did? It wasn't bad enough to send this. Look at his avatar. Look, it's intentional. You see that? See, see, this kind of thing is going to cause you to, you know, who knows? I might, I don't know. You might might ask me a question and, you know, the answer might not be exactly what you want for this, man. I, I'm, I'm going to remember this. This is not... It's not cool, Robert. He changed his avatar to uh, to Marquise. Well played, sir. I'm sure you're having a, uh, a laugh at my expense, and that's that's fine. It's all good. All right, next up is EB saying hello, and then Jacob Madrid saying happy Friday, Ron, and Stripe Action Geek Squad. So thank you, guys. Uh, guys, I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking some time out of your Friday at this slow time of the year to still support the channel. means a lot. Jared George is up next. He says, Ron, always dropping great knowledge. I try, man. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, you know what the thing is, you know, I answer the same questions over and 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 over again. That you 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 begin to think that everybody just knows as much as you do. Like I, I like I've answered questions about pre-emergent on soul and on soul testing like a dozen times, at least once a week, right? Um, on the live stream anyway, and then email even more so. But it's still good for someone if someone's brand new, first time watching the channel. If said anyone is on here, it's the first time watching, having a small little section like that. I think it's valuable. You know, it's going to help someone you out that will help them get on the right path for uh, for dominating their lawn, creating the lawn their neighbors are absolutely going to envy in 2024. That's what we're all about, right? That is what we are all about, creating amazing stands of turf grass. All right, next up is Mark Luna. He says, good evening, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts. Time for another great session by the GOAT. Thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate the, uh, the love and support. And he, like like uh, Ted is telling you guys to hit that like button. Guys, we got 60 plus people in here and there's only 43 likes. Surely we can do better than that. Come on, you guys get that like button. It's free. Doesn't cost anything. Doesn't cost anything. Uh, Jackie Jones says, I'm all ears, Ron. Hopefully it was valuable. Jackie, if you have any questions about what I was saying in the beginning, the little monologue, feel free to, to drop them in the chat and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Again, as far as like application rates for pre-emergent, the ones for warm season turf I've got memorized fairly well because I have warm season grass. But I can also help you out if you have cool season lawn, cool season lawn as well. I mean, in the description for all those products that I listed that are actually applied, like Essential G, the fertilizer, the um, and the pre-emergence, there are tables that show if you have this type of grass, this is the range that you can use. And there's video showing you how to make it, how I like to mix it. It's just saying it's the only way to mix it, but how I like to do it, how to spray it, all that jazz. So we try and make the store as complete as possible to where. If you buy something, you actually also have the information to get the best result out of it versus just buying something that shows up and then you got to figure it out. Like, that's no fun, right? You want to get out there and, and get to work. So that's what we aim for. Jared is up next. He says, Ron, I was looking into Prodiamine, but it seems like everywhere a golf course lawn store uh, isn't on the golf course lawn store um, included isn't shipping uh, Prodiamine to Washington State. Any idea why? I can't find information on it. Yeah, so there are, so for, for us, I mean, you, there, Prodiamine is available in Washington State. You can absolutely do that. We don't ship it there um, due to cost, 
That's the that's the big thing. That's something I'm working on changing. So stay tuned for that, Jared. I mean, if you want to get some now, um, I get it. You can local. You can probably find not probably. You can find it locally. You can absolutely do that. Um, but I am working to solve that problem of not being able to ship the granular prodiamine to um, to Washington State. Now the liquid you absolutely can get. That will ship out there. So if you if you look at for example, if we go back to the golf course lawn store, go to shop and a weed killer section, and hit pre emergent. Like these guys will ship. So like the the five pound jug that'll go out there, and then also the uh, the the five ounce um, bottle will also go out there. So either one of these will um, can be shipped. It's just the the granular is where there is a challenge currently that I'm working I'm working to solve. So there's not like there's any kind of restriction on prodiamine in Washington. It's really a an us thing as far as shipping it uh, shipping it there. So working on it. Stay tuned. As soon as it is the issue is resolved, I will let you know. All right, next up is Jared. He says, Ron, if I do a soil test now in the winter, when would be the next time to check the soil? Late summer, fall? I mean, I would love to test every month, but money, great question. So I'm a fan of doing soil testing twice in the year, Jared. So one in the spring, once in the fall. The one now is close enough that if you were to do a soil test, you could use this the results now to drive your, your spring fertilization program. So you could do a soil test now or at the end of the year, going into January, and then I would call it good really until um, the fall, unless you want to measure the effectiveness of your nutrient program. So here's an example of where you might want to do one in the middle of the summer, right? Let's say you, you do a soil test and your, I don't know, like say your, your potassium or your, say your phosphorus levels, this is a bit better example. Say your phosphorus levels are low, right? So you switch to a, to a fertilizer with phosphorus in it, like our complete 14714, and you start applying that. And you and you get to like, say, mid-season, and you want to know, hey, how, like, what are my phosphorus levels at now? Have I raised them up enough to where I can transition away from a phosphorus fertilizer? Because really, when it comes to, um, to fertilizers with phosphorus in them, I'm not a fan of using that, like, in perpetuity. Really, you only want to apply phosphorus whenever... You, um, your soil test shows that there's a deficiency because unlike nitrogen, unlike potassium, it it stays it's st it's not it's less mobile. It stays around in the soil a lot longer than nitrogen and uh, and potassium do. So in that case, let's say your soil were phosphorus deficient and you wanted to check, say, in end of July, you know, end of June or end of June going to July, um, where you are, you could do a soil test in the summer for that purpose. You know what I mean? So if it, that's 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 the only case where I would for me. I would um I would do that. I mean, it's, it's really if you're you know if money's no object, then yeah, you could do a soil test as frequently as you want to. But I, I the, the most the most um the shortest interval I've ever done. There was a year where I was doing a soil test every three months because I just wanted to see how the soil was changing. And you will see changes. I mean, you'll you'll see you'll see changes in pH, change in nutrient levels over over the over the course of a few months. But as far as the the best balance, in my opinion, as far as costs and just getting like data that's good enough to to drive your program, uh, spring and fall. So if you did one now, you could also do one. You could wait till the fall to do a uh, another one if you wanted. So uh, so hope that helps. The biggest thing I would tell you is you want there to be three to four weeks. Four weeks is even better between the last time you did any kind of a granular fertilizer application to your lawn. So you would not want to go out there and say put out a granular fertilizer and you know three four or five days later you go out and pull cores for a soil test. That could skew the results that you get. So to have them as accurate as possible, you really want you know, a month or so between the time you did a granular input and when you're pulling cores to send them out for analysis. So hope that helps, sir. Great question. If you have any other follow-ups, feel free to let me know. All right, next up is Ryan, Ryan Babbage. He says, hey, Ron, love the show. I'm gonna be purchasing the backpack sprayer that you recommend. What is the best way to calibrate your backpack sprayer? Oh, question I love. Okay, so I have a video, Ryan, that explains the process that I like to use. So there's a couple ways of doing it. One way that people will tell you is you can just get like a gallon jug, and I, I don't have one, I don't have one here. Get like a gallon jug, have a fully charged battery in your backpack sprayer, and run the backpack sprayer and see how long, like start a timer and see how long it, get, it takes to get up to one gallon and then just like where it gets a one gallon stop and then look at the time and that's how long, um, that's what your walking pace approximately needs to be to cover um, a thousand square feet, to put out a gallon of product mix over a thousand square feet. And that is gonna vary 
based on the spray tip you're using, or it can vary based on the spray tip you're using, right? So that's one way of doing it. I don't like to do that because, I don't prefer that way because you, um, like stopping exactly on the gallon is not, um, is not always easy to consistently do that. So what I do is I have a method where I will, I will spray the, um, I'll spray in the, the, the same gallon container for 15 seconds, right? And then I'll measure how much of, like how much water's in there. So if I spray it for 15 seconds, at 15 seconds, I stop, right? And I say, okay, I've got, I don't know, let's use an example. I've got like 12 ounces of water in there. I've got 16 ounces of water, whatever it happens to be, right? I then take however much water is in there and I divide 128 by that. So that's, that, there's 128 ounces in a gallon of, of water and I divide 128 by that, um, by whatever I sprayed in 15 seconds. Whatever number comes out of that, you simply multiply um, that number by 15 because you're basically checking how many 15 second intervals is it caught, does it take for us to get to a gallon of water? Um, and that's how I do it. Reason being is that you're not relying on you your, your stopping exactly at a gallon. And as far as running the test over and over, so say you want to run the test like two or three times just to make sure that you know the number you come up with is um, is accurate that it, that you're that you're you're getting pretty much the same result each time. It takes a whole lot less time to spray water for 15 seconds, stop, do do, do the quick math versus like like spraying a gallon of water, hoping you stop it on time, and then repeating the process over and over. So that's the way I like to do it. I've got a video showing how um, how to do that that walks through it. Um, that walks us in, in detail, shows you actually doing, shows me actually doing it. Um, but that is, in a nutshell, um, that is my process. To get a gallon jug that has markings on it for an ounce, for ounces, spray for 15 seconds. You could do 30 seconds if you want to. Spray for, for, you know, whatever interval you decide you want to go for. I do 15 seconds. Whatever, how much water is in the tank or in, or in the, 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 the measuring cup at that time, divide 128 by that. And then whatever the number that comes out is going to be somewhere number, It'll be like four between four and five or so, right? This is typically what happens with the um, with the I think with the yard mastery and the flow zone. Then you just multiply whatever that number is by fifteen because we were spraying for fifteen. We're, we're basically saying how many fifteen second chunks does it take to get, you know, to spray a gallon of water, and that's how I do it. So I've explained it twice, but if that's still um, just still not making sense to you, I'm going to send you a video that actually walks through that process live that you can watch. And the video is only three minutes and 51 seconds. So it's not that long. And Ryan, the good, first of all, thanks for, for getting the, um, that sprayer. It's an excellent sprayer. And the, the thing that makes people not get a great result with backpack sprayers is the thing that you're asking about now. So the fact that you're looking to get one, the first question out of your mind was, hey, not you know, what rate should I use for spraying the fertilizer? The first thing you're saying is, how do I calibrate this? How do I figure out what my walking pace should be to ensure that I'm putting out a gallon of product mix over a thousand square feet is an excellent, excellent, excellent question because that really drives your results. You know, that really, that really is going to to ensure that you get consistent results by uh, by by doing the calibration process. Um, again, if you change spray tips, now here's the thing: if you if you get spray tips that have that are rated at the same flow rate you really should be pretty much in the ballpark to where you don't have to necessarily calibrate again. So if you're using like say a, a flood jet tip and it's the flow rate on it is the same thing as the, it's, it's rated the same as say a, um, a foliar tip, then whatever number you come up with as far as your walking pace for uh, one for one gallon, it should be pretty close between those two, but it doesn't take that long to, to check it. And if you want to, just to make sure that, you know, there's not anything weird and that your, that your, your numbers are, are jiving that within, you know, five or six seconds of each, of each other, then you can repeat the test with, for the other spray tip. So really, if you're really trying to be a super nerd, you would do this process twice, one for the follow your spray tip and then one for the flood jet spray tip. Again, not strictly always necessary if you're using spray tips that are rated for the same flow rate, but if you just want to be super pedantic, you want to make sure that you, you know, you've, you've got data for both of them, you're just that guy, then you would do a calibration for uh, for each one. The thing I would tell you is make sure that the sprayer is charged, right? So don't go out there with, with like a, a half half charged sprayer to do your uh, your calibration. You want it to be in the state of how it's going to be whenever you're spraying the lawn. So Hope that helps. This is the video on calibrating your sprayer. Uh, da, 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 da. Video. Typing is hard.
And for those of you guys on the Facebook, I'll post that here as well too. So that's a spare calibration video. And I uh, hope that helps, sir. Hope that helps. And congrats on the new sprayer. I will clap it for you. Once you get it, let me know, and then we'll clap it up for you. And, you know, because you're getting some new hardware. But uh, good, good stuff. I like it. I like it. Great question. All right, next up, we have Brian uh, Tanner. Brian Tanner. He says, I sent my end of year soil test out yesterday. I eagerly await the results to see how the nutrient program I applied to the summer worked. Yeah, it's a great thing to, to check out, Brian. Also, the big one of the most important things that you get out of a soil test that you do this time of year that is valuable, kind of like the theme of, of our discussion tonight for next year, is figuring out where your soil pH is. Because unlike your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium levels, like which those you can address relatively quickly pH can can take longer. So the sooner you know there's some kind of deficiency as far as your pH being too high or being too low, knowing that now you can begin making amendments to help get the pH into that Goldilocks zone, which can help you get more out of your nutrient inputs. So good stuff, man. Keep me posted as far as what your soil test results say once you get them back. Next up, Mr. Bruce Romano. Now, Bruce and I... I I want to think that Bruce and Mark are related. Bruce being the nicer of the two. So like Bruce didn't send me like, you know, moles and like like a little mole pet and, you know, try to kick me when I'm down. He knows I'm, his thing is, see, Mark knows I'm sensitive about this. And for him to mess with me right now kind of shows he's, he's not very nice. But Bruce, I think, is the nice brother of the two. So Bruce's question is, hey, Ron, when using Headway G, do you need to be concerned about applying too many consecutive applications which may cause resistance to the fungicide. If so, what fungicide would you rotate with? Oh, excellent question, Bruce. So what I will say is, yes, when it comes to fungicides, I don't like to apply the same fungicide uh, more than twice in a row. So let's say you had some kind of disease problem you're on, you got like large patch or whatever, you applied, you did an application of Headway G, and then 21 days later, you did another application of it. Really, one app should take care of it. But say you do a second app, and then one, the time, cor the course is run for that period of time. You look in your lawn, and at this point, we're going to be six to eight weeks after you first started treating it, and you're still seeing a problem. I would not do a third application of the same, of the same um, fungicide, not even really in the same family if you can. I would rotate to a different one. A good one that I use is uh, Clary's, like 336F is one that I use to rotate between headway and pillar. Even though the, the active ingredients in headway and pillar are different, they're in the same um, families. I think they're both group three and group 11 fungicides. So if you do two, two apps, you would rotate to a different fungicide and then you could come back to headway or come back to pillar. So two in a row and then rotate to another one if you're doing them subsequently, right? Um, if you did an application, say, in the springtime and you're looking at your fall pre-emergent, uh, sorry, your fall um, fungicide app, like that, that's fine. Like that I wouldn't have um, too much heartburn with. Like if you did like two apps in, say, May, June, and you for your fall fungicide app, you wanted to use Headway G again or Pillar G again or Pillar SC in um, in October, November, I wouldn't have an issue with that because you're spacing them out. It's really when you're when you're doing them one after another, right? Say you're, you're, you're trying to treat an active issue, an active problem, that is when I would I would rotate. I wouldn't do more than two um, two apps in a row. So hope that helps, sir. As far as fungicides, and you guys that are wondering what, what um, Bruce is talking about, Bruce being the nice brother, uh, if you go to shop and then go to fungicide insecticides, uh, you've got um, Headway, which is a granular, excellent product, and you got Pillar SC, which is a liquid a liquid fungicide, these, they, these two are, are both excellent. They are both combination products. So if you're looking for like a, a broad spectrum fungicide that will take care of your most common lawn diseases, Pillar or Headway are excellent choices. Um, in recent years, I've switched to Pillar because it's just, I can just throw it in the tank. I can throw other things in there and it, it just saves me time. But Headway is also an excellent product too. And it's less, I'm gonna say it's less work to use. Like actually, Pillar is easier because it's, it's only one rate. It's like one ounce per thousand square feet and you're good. Whereas headway, depending on what you are targeting, there are different application rates as far as whether you're doing preventative or if you are treating an active problem. With pillar, it's the same for whether you're doing preventative or controlling an active uh, active issue. So either one of these guys would be your jam. Now, as far as the fungicide I was telling you to rotate to, the 336F, uh, Bruce, we don't carry that on the store, but I will get you a link to it in case you wanna have a bottle of that handy. Um, it does smell pretty awesome. I gotta, I gotta tell you that's not as bad as like Eagle, but it's, uh, it, it's, it, 
not a pleasant smelling fungicide. <laughs> but um, but here you go. So Bruce, this is um, the 336F. Um, so I'd say uh, we'll call it rotational fungicide. I mean, it's not really a thing, but you know what I mean. Anyone that's watching this, you know what I mean. Uh, so this is the one that I use. It's not the only option. That is, if memory serves me, I think it's a group one. I think, you know what, let me, let me check. I should know this. I should know this. I think it's a group one. Yeah, it's a group one fungicide. Yeah, so you're, you're going to a different mode of action when you rotate away from headway or from pillar, and then you can go back to those. And that will help with preventing uh, resistance, you know, disease, disease problems. So great question, Bruce. Um, I really do appreciate, uh, it's, good, it's a good one. Um, and again, if you are only using your fungicides as preventative, then you could use headway again in the spring, in the fall. There's no issues with that. It's really when you're doing like one after the after the, one after another, where you have something that's, that's somewhat stubborn. Which again, I've not really come. Across, I'm not. I'm not really. Um, that's that should be rare. You know what I mean? That shouldn't be a, a common thing that you have to deal with. Uh, but if in case you do, rotating to a different family is a good idea. Good stuff. All right. Great question, sir. All right, so next up we have a super chat, another super chat. Thank you so much. We got Lance F in the house. Thank you so much, Lance. Super chat received. He says, what is the best way to protect my soil over the winter? Reason why I did a full reno and not all the seed took. Exposing open areas of soil. My, I don't want uh, the soil to get killed with UV rays all winter long. What should I do? My man, Ron. Yeah, buddy. Protecting the soil. I don't, I mean, I, I, I don't know if this is really a um, a problem, Lance. I wouldn't, in other words, you think about it, like the majority, like 99.9999999% of the soil on planet Earth is directly exposed to the sun, like whenever the sun's out and stuff still grows in it just fine, right? So I, I wouldn't really worry about it. I mean, the thing that you're really going to be concerned that you're going to probably dealing with some is, uh, is weeds. Like you might get some weed pressure in the area where the soil is exposed. In that case, I would just go after it with like a post-emergent herbicide that's correct for your grass types. So if you got like um, cool season grass, then you could use um, like a three-way, like, um, like, oh, what's, what, I'm, what am I thinking here? I, I, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank here. A uh, three-way, like um, triad. Triad is a good, as would be a good choice. Uh, if you want something like you're dealing with sedges, you could go with uh, with sedge hammer. If you've got warm season turf, Celsius or certainty is what I would say. So the thing that I would think that you're going to be dealing with is really weed pressure. And for that, I would use a post-emergent. Avoid pre-emergent in those areas because I imagine the areas where the seed did not take yet, you're going to want to you know, apply grass seed in the springtime to try and get that to grow in. And pre-emergent is going to negatively impact the results you get. So we're not we're going to stay away from pre-emergent in those areas and just rely on post-emergent herbicides to clean up any weeds that may be growing through there. Nothing really to worry about as far as UV protection or anything like that. It's the soil. Like it's been, you know, the dirt's been around before we were here and it'll be all around long after we're gone. And like I said, grass grows in it all around the planet without any kind of, you know, any kind of protection from sun from the sun. And you'll, you'll be just fine. You will be just fine with everything you're doing as far as, I know. I think you're also doing, you do essential G, you do biostimulants. So you're, you're doing a lot of all the things that are ready to create healthy soil. So now you're just going to wait for the weather conditions, temperature, and that type of thing to be where they need to be. And then, you know, continue with your seeding project and away you go. So hope that helps. Lance, great question. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really does mean a lot. And uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to, it's easy to overthink things as far as, um, you know, thinking your soil is more delicate, more delicate than it is. But it's, um, like I said, it's, it's it it works it works pretty well without us. It works even better with with inputs and you know some some extra love. But as far as the concern that you have, it's nothing that I would um I would put too much time into. I wouldn't spend too much time on it. If you want to do something, apply apply essential G. That's going to have the soil in its tip top form in great shape. Plenty of organic material to where where whenever springtime hits, you're good to go. Nothing's going to be holding you back then. All right. Thank you so much for the super chat again, sir. I appreciate it. Next up, we have Shazia Shadri from the UK. She says, thanks. Uh, I like your educational format. All right, cool, Shazia. We'll, we'll do that. It'll make, it'll, um, I'll have a talking point for each week, and we'll start the show out that way, you know, until people start complaining, and then I'll switch to something else. All right. Um, so I'm glad you, you're finding it useful. Hopefully, you're staying warm over there in England. Next up is Higgy Pop. 
Higgy Pop is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday, 2024. Let's go. Guys, it's not that far away. You know, we are, granted, I know, you know us lawn care nerds, we're just thinking about getting back out there and fertilizing the lawn and mowing grass and doing all the things. But we are in mid-December. So if you think about it, in Northeast Georgia, you know, the pre-emergent trucks are going to be rolling about a, a month from now. Four to six weeks, the, 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 the trucks are going to be out here putting out pre-emergent. Like late January, early February, in my neighborhood, they start doing it. So if you're like me and you're trying to get ahead of the game, really within eight weeks, you know, two months, you know, six to eight weeks, you could be applying your spring pre-emergent. I've, I've done that in the years past. I've done my, my uh, spring pre-emergent as, as early as like the last couple of days of January. And I typically will get an app out. I mean, put this way, I have not, I can't tell you that the last time I've done pre-emergent application in March, I, I don't typically wait that long. Normally February is the month that I get my spring pre-emergent out. That's only, you know, eight weeks away, less than eight weeks away. So it'll be here before you know it. Be here before you know it. So enjoy this little bit of downtime because it will end soon. It will end soon. Let's see. We have uh, Offroad NV in the live stream on Instagram saying happy Friday. What's going on, Offroad NV? Hope you're doing well. Appreciate you coming to hang out. Take some time out of your oh so busy Friday to support the channel. Ted Rogers is getting a laugh out of Mark Romano and uh, Robert Rainey's. They're they're just they're sadistic. I think that's the correct word. Their sadistic sense of humor. That's not you, listen. You can't play with a man like that. I mean, listen. It's uh, mole damage is a very emotional topic for me, and it's not been long enough. Too soon. Too soon. It's been like a week. You guys couldn't. You guys could not wait to get out there and be like. You know, send me a send me a mole, like a, a pet mole to have on the shelf, and then and then and, and Robert. I mean, look at this. I mean, the mo like a cheeky picture of the mole saying, "Hey, what's up, buddy? Really nice lawn you got here." Okay, from Caddyshack. Shack. Sure, hate to have to mess this all up, but you did put you did uh, you did make it nice and appetizing for me. So let's go. But uh, I'm sure you guys are having fun with it. So it's all 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 in fun. Good time. Good time of year. In, tis the season for uh, for laughing and having a good time, right? T-1000 is in the house. He says, good afternoon. What's going on, T-1000? <laughs> he says, rip. Uh, uh, Papa Mo's low says, nice, Robert. Don't encourage him. Don't do that. That's not, that's not, that's not good. Don't encourage him to do that. And then uh, <laughs> T-1000 says, uh, cue the lonely man music. <laughs> uh, I will remember that. That's when I got it. Like that song... When I took it out of the box, that song started started in my mind. That's the one I started. I could see him out of there, like, you know, I will. I can't sing, but the song, I will remember you. Will you remember me? I'll remember you, all right. You know, I, I should, I should, um, for any moles, if y'all, if I'm on like mole TV, if I'm like the guy, you know, y'all are planning, you know, formulating your plan to come at me next year. Look, this is your boy. This is him. You know, this is, you see how happy he is? He ain't that happy now. He's, you know, I don't know where he is now. He's not, not even the property anymore. He's gone, got thrown out. So, just know, don't come at me. Don't come at me. Where's my um? Where's my? Where's the judge? I got the judge. Look, the judge. I still got the. Still got the judge handy. So if you guys wanna, you guys wanna come mess around, I got the judge right here. This is the one. This is the one. This this is the actual, the actual tool that delivered lawn care justice. If y'all decide you're gonna come on my lawn again, I'm gonna use the same one. You guys can get reacquainted with your, you know, your spiritual brother, Mr. Marquise. Play with me. See what happens. All right, Larry's up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Nope, updated picks this week. I just realized a couple of days ago that I had not turned on my sprinkler timer back on and for the rains over a week ago, growth was slow. No worries, Larry, I appreciate that uh, you at least remembered, you know. I mean, I'm sure the lawn's still looking pretty awesome. On the topic of awesome looking uh, lawns, you know, I got a picture from, from Jeremy. So Jeremy has a, I think it's a Tiff Tough lawn that he sent in. And in December, look at how his lawn's looking. I mean, it's not like summertime, you know, green. It's not like crazy, you know, knock yourself out green. But if you look at, look at the contrast, look at his lawn compared to the, the lawns down the street. Those are, they're fully dormant. He's still rocking plenty of greens. So that Tiff Tough is doing the business, man. I got to tell you, looking good. Great work, Jeremy. I appreciate the picture. I can't make out what's in your in your yard. I mean, is it like lawn of the month? Do you guys do lawn of the month rewards in, in December? <laughs> is that, is that a thing in your neighborhood? If so, you're definitely winning it. But again, thanks for the picture. Glad to see Bermuda grass is still holding on strong somewhere. It's uh, it's good times. Uh, T1000 says Marquise, you will not be missed. No, Marquise won't be missed. 
yeah look at you guys look at look at this see this it's like 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 school children like the ones that would do pranks in school and and mm, that's you guys that's you guys icy hot on the top on the toilet seat robert and ted that's who uh that that's 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 who you're dealing with right there all right ted says nope always have a new set of ears like i was earlier in the year cool i got you I hear you uh ted and then Robert says, all the good fun. It is. It was good. I I could not stop laughing. When I got the, the box and I opened it up, I'm like, what on earth is this? And I, it was, like I said, well played. Really, very well done. I uh, I couldn't stop myself from laughing when I, when I opened it up. All right, next up is Gary Kellett Jr. He says, happy Friday. Last week, I asked about new Lebanon fertilizer in the lawn store. I went old school and was watching you put down, uh, yeah, Proscape, 2206 for a last treatment of the year, why not have that item? So the ProScape, oh, it's a great fertilizer. It, it's, um, it does have, I'm not sure if it's Mesa. It, it does have their homogenous prill that they use in their fertilizers, but it's um, the SGN, the size number, the, the size of the, the prill is along the lines of this. So it's fairly large. This is like you know what you typically find in fertilizer. It's not, I mean, it's not bad, it's not a bad product, but I prefer a smaller, a finer, a finer prill um, for my fertilizers. That's why I went with Humic Max and then also the uh, the Greens Grade fertilizers. If I add any more options to, as far as like fertilizers to the store, anything along those lines, I am gonna want it to be a, um, a smaller SGN uh, prill. For the reason that, you know, like think about who I target, right? The people that, that watch a lot of this content are they're, they're real mowing or they have they have a manicured lawn, you're out there mowing regularly. And even if you're rotary mowing it, you're, you're mowing like more than once a week if you're following my program, which is gonna cause your grass to thicken up. While this can work okay, having a smaller prill, like it works better because you're not gonna have, like whenever you apply Humic Max or apply any of the green grades for it, either of these guys, literally you apply them and they disappear. You can't see it anywhere on the lawn. They, they, they literally fall right past the, the turf right right past the canopy into this and get to the soil where they can begin working. So for that reason, Gary, I um I would not carry that fertilizer. I want something with a with a finer, a smaller prill. That's what I'm that's what I am I'm after. So um I mean not saying that, that there can't be additional options, but anything I do bring, anything I do do to expand the uh, the available options in the line are going to be a, a finer pro because that's there's really no downside to it other than it's a, a bit more expensive than a larger one, but you can use it on fescue lawns, like a, a like taller mowed grass, and it works especially well on tighter cut turf. So while that is an excellent product, it's, you know, it just doesn't really fit into like, you know, what what I'm going for as far as the the, the newer fertilizers that I'm trying to bring to um, to the DIY community. So hope my explanation makes sense. Again, good product, just not a fit for, um, not the best fit for what I'm trying to do. So hope that makes sense. Uh, Ted Rogers has a goat. Thank you so much, Ted. It's funny. Next up is Brian Tanner. Uh -huh. He says, Ron, do you know why it might bore a hole about two to three, two or three feet and is about three to four inches um, three to four inches around. Some said it might be a groundhog. This is the second time I've seen it in my yard. Filled it with sand. It could be a groundhog. It could be a vole. Um, it could be a, could be a, 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 a several things. It's definitely not a mole. Moles tend to do like tunnels. They tend to like, like burrow along along the surface. So it could be a groundhog, like you're like you're thinking, or it could be a vole, which looks more like a little, almost like a, little, a smaller mouse kind of looking type. I guess it's a rodent. I would consider it a rodent. So groundhog or, or vole is what I would go for. The fact that you filled it in, we'll see if they come back or if they open up a new, you know, a new hole somewhere else. And then based on that, you'll be able to uh, to target and treat it uh, accordingly. So so uh, so hope that helps, sir. Vole or, or groundhog is what I would be looking at. It's a good it's a good question. Sorry you're dealing with that, man. I mean it's um, although I would say a small single hole in the ground is not as bad as like the, the damage that moles do. Like mole tracks are just, again, it makes the lawn look diseased. It just, it's a, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just aware of that and the fact, the reaction that I have to it, but it just, it just does not, it's very ugly what moles do to a lawn in, in a, in short order. All right, uh, Ted, Ted has another suggestion here. He says possibly a squirrel. That's possible too, it could be a squirrel. That's a good, that's a good point. It could be a, uh, a squirrel. 
He says, thought that might be the case, um, but we could ask. So yeah, it could be a squirrel, um, a groundhog, or voles. You could look at vol a vole potentially as well too. All right, next up is Craig Jones. He says, hello, Ron. Any recommendations for a super phosphate product? Soil test results say I need some, thank you. Uh, they're not, the, none that we carry. There's one, I found a link for you. There's one on Amazon. It's like a, I think it's triple phosphate. It's like a 46 formulation. Um, let me see. I will, I'll find, I'll find it for you. But it's like a, there's like a, a specialty fertilizer that has, that's primarily phosphate. Yeah. Yeah. Super triple phosphate. So like a 040, yeah, 040, uh, zero. There's also a 0460, but yeah, that that is what I would um I would go with. Yeah, this guy here. This this is a good option. This is a good option right here. Um, so I'll get you a link to this, uh, Craig. This will uh, will do what you're looking for if you want to go for a strictly uh, phosphorus fertilizer. Uh, super phos. Yeah, and again, this they come in different fertilizations, but 0460 is which you'll you'll commonly find. This is not the only one. But this is um, this is one that'll that'll work well as far as coverage goes. Twenty five pound bag. So it depends how big your lawn is and like how how heavy you're gonna put this down. But um, but here's the thing: you shouldn't be using this. Like this is designed to you, know, you apply it for for a few months, then you can retest your your uh, your nutrient levels, see where the phosphorus is. And then again, I am not a fan of constantly hammering the soil with phosphorus. Unless you have a deficiency, you really don't wanna be putting a lot of phosphorus into the soil. Like you look at some states, like um, like Maryland is one that comes to mind. Like some of them, they, they actually require that you have a soil test that shows, your, that shows that you have a phosphorus deficiency before you use a fertilizer with phosphorus in it. So even though you get that triple phosphate, phosphate product, Craig, which will help bring those levels up, once you've determined that you're in the optimal zone, I would switch to a fertilizer that has nitrogen and potassium as your macros and omit adding more phosphorus to the soil. So that is the only, only piece of advice I'd give you. Uh, any other questions, feel free to uh, to let me know. Great, great stuff. Man, I love it. Warm with my heart. Folks getting soil tests done and fertilizing based on their soil test results. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. You guys are... Uh, you guys won't even need me anymore here soon, right? You have it all figured out. You have it all figured out. Next up is uh, Danny. Danny's also finding a great pleasure out of um, out of Robert and Mark's sense of humor. I mean, I guess it is kind of funny. I mean, just it just seemed, seemed a bit soon, right? Like this week would have been as bad, but literally the week right after, it just seems like you know, just get a guy when he's down, you know. All right, uh, Dan Lynch is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I put out my first app of 10 pounds of Carbon Pro G today before the rain. I purchased it of Carbon Pro L to do regular apps after green up. How often would you recommend, monthly or weekly? I would do it every two weeks for the liquid product, for the Carbon Pro L, and then for the Carbon Pro G, I would do that once per month. So the granular, once per month, liquids. I like to use a, or spray liquids as part of a spoon feeding program. Which, which is gonna come out to um, every two weeks. If you want some ideas around why I like to do spoon feeding, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and a blog, you will see this article, which is now on page, yep, still page two, on, on spoon feeding. Talks about the topic, gives you some options on the, the levels that you try and aim for as far as the amount of nitrogen going into the soil in each application. So feel free to read this, I'll link it in the chat. It'll give you some ideas on how you can put together a spoon feeding program. But once per month for the granular, once every two weeks for the liquid is what I find produces excellent results. And here, we'll put this in the chat for you, Dan. So at Dan Lynch, so Dan Lynch, uh, spoon feeding blog. There you go. So this will, um, we'll talk about like, I mean, the, the, the products in here are gonna be different than the ones that you're referring to, but it will give you an idea, right? I mean, again, if you're looking for a granular fertilizer, Humic Max, excellent choice. And uh, you can use what you want to use for your liquid fertilizer because the Carbon Pro L doesn't really have. I think, I think it's got a, a, a tiny amount of iron in it. I believe it's it's largely a biosimilar, and I think it has a little bit of iron. I might be wrong on that. So you can 
absolutely mix it with whatever liquid fertilizer that you decide to go with. I mean, in that blog post I just linked to you, there are a granular fertilizer option and there's also a liquid fertilizer option. And they, I supply rates and all this kind of stuff as well. So there you can read that, follow that, and you'll get a good result. Just be sure to mow your grass. All right, next up is, uh, you know, that was a good question, Dan. I think I'm gonna save that one. That's a good one. Why not? Why not? Other folks will have this this very same question, and uh, that way I can answer it once and just say, hey, go watch this. All right, next up is Gary Kellett Jr. He says, I notice you don't have any granular fungicide in the store. What do you know about Lebanon Eagle fungicide granular? First of all, Gary, I'm hurt. I do carry a granular fungicide in the store. You know what? Let me show you. If you go over to the golf course lawn store and you go to shop, and you go to fungicide, insecticide, you got Headway. Headway G is strictly a granular fungicide. In fact, all it is is fungicide. It's propiconazole and it's octostrobin. It's two, fun not one, it's two fungicides in one bag. So Headway G, you're covered there. If you want like a combination insecticide and fungicide type product, you go with Caravan. You know, that is azoxystrobin and um, also an insecticide. So if you want like, you know, a bit of grub control and a fungicide, you could go with Caravan. But really, if you're looking strictly for a fungicide product, then Headway is what you want to go with. So Headway for your granular and then Pillar SC for your liquid. So I do have one of each. You'll have to take that back because I do have both. I, I got you covered. As far as the Eagle fungicide, I can't say. I've not used Lebanon Eagle to know how well it works. Probably okay, probably just fine. But if it's a single product, if it's a single fungicide, single active ingredient, I would argue it's not as good as Headway because Headway has two, two fungicides in one bag. So you get two modes of action. Saves you time and improves your control. Helps you get better results. All right, so let me link this to you, Gary, in case you decide to go that route. There's a link to Headway G. Next up is Dan Lynch. He says, can you let me know um, what email to use for questions? Yeah, I mean, typically the questions are related mainly to products. I, I'm good with that, um, Dan. That's why I, actually, I do the live streams so that people can ask me questions live and I can answer them now. But I'm getting, like, I'm getting to the point where I'm getting enough email or getting enough email that to where it's getting taking longer and longer to do that. Uh, but if you want to email me, as long as you keep it short, succinct, to the point, then you can email me here, which is ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me your question and I will do my best to help you out. The big thing I would say is if you're asking me a question about how to get rid of um, this weed or whatever, you know, what, th here's the thing, here's something that should be in every single email that you ever send to me. If you're asking a question about how do I fix, insert whatever, the thing you should get, you gotta tell me, is what kind of grass you have. That is probably the most important thing because if, without knowing what kind of grass you have, especially if it's a, a question about uh, a weed that you're trying to control, it's it's hard to give you the best advice because like the herbicide that works well for cool season grass, it will be different to the one that works best for warm season grass. So big, in any questions you guys email me, this is not just for Dan, please, for the love of everything green, tell me what kind of grass you have, or give me your best guess. Say, hey, listen, I live in Ohio, or I live in Washington. That's gonna let me know, more than likely, you got cool season grass. But if you know what kind of grass you have, let me know. Send me a picture of it if you want. And then that will ensure that I'm giving you the best um, the best possible, most relevant, the most relevant uh, data, most relevant answer. But that's it. We're on a golf course lawn. That is where I uh, where I am. All right, let's see what we got next. And next up is Ryan. Ryan Babbage is in the house. He says, thanks, Ryan. You are very welcome, sir. Thank you for watching. And uh, next, we have a question. The over to Instagram. Instagram, guys. The Instagram folks are, are becoming part of the live stream, which is great. So this one is from Rob Falcons1. You're a Falcons fan? Bro, it's hard, right? Isn't it hard being a Falcons fan? It's tough. It's pretty tough. I mean, probably, what's worse than being a Falcons fan? Being... Being a Panthers fan is probably worse than being a Falcons fan right now. I mean, even, you know, they are arguably worse than the um, than the Falcons this year. All right, Rob Falcon says, hello, Ron, hope all is well. I can't complain. I live south of Hartsfield-Jackson Airport. I have Bermuda and having some winter weeds growing. Any suggestions on treatment? Don't know the type of weeds, sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> so weeds, winter weeds in Georgia, 
you have um, a couple major, you got two major categories. You have like broadleaf weeds for the most part, and then you have poannua. Those are the, the, the common ones that you might have. So you might have some, um, if you have, a, if it's like a purple flower, you might have like some, you might have some hen bit in your lawn, which is possible. Um, but the, the two, the common weeds that people deal with are some type of broadleaf or poannua. And you're not on YouTube, so I can't actually show you the, um, the products that I would say, but for broadleaf weeds, the herbicide that I'm, I'm going to suggest is a product called Celsius. This will take care of, I mean, I'm going to say all of them, but this is this is a, a very broad spectrum, broad leaf control for warm season turf. It's excellent on Bermuda grass. Uh, so this is what I would use if you have broad leaf weeds. If you have poannua, which is the way you can tell if it's poannua, it's going to be, if your lawn is dormant, you're going to see like some big clumps of bright green. And then when you go look at the uh, the, the center of that weed, it's gonna have like a white seed heads. That is poannua. So if, if you're not sure, you can go to the Golf Force Lawn Store, go to the product description for certainty for this product. And in there, there'll be a picture of poannua. So you can identify, hey, if that's what you're dealing with. Also on the Golf Force Lawn Store, here in the last couple of weeks, we've been doing some blogs on uh, weed identification. So we've got one on what weeds are white, have white flowers, which ones have purple flowers, and then soon we're going to be doing one that's going to be released here, might release it tomorrow, we'll see, on which weeds have yellow flowers. So white, purple, yellow. Um, so you can check out the, the blog on the Golf Course Lawn Store. Just go to, to um, the Golf Course Lawn, Golf Course Store, go to resources, and then blog, and you'll see those two blog posts there that have pictures of the weeds and tell you, hey, this, this herbicide can be work for that or different, different methods of, of controlling it. Like why it comes in, what are the conditions that it likes, and how you can control it. So hope that helps. But if for warm season turf, this is going to be the concoction that I like. Certainty for poannua and sedges. You're not going really to have sedges this time of year, but you'll, you will have poannua. And then for broadleafs, Celsius. For best results, you will want to use surfactant with them. So you will mix this with either one of these, depending on which one you're doing, trying to control, and that's gonna help you get the best results. We have a kit that includes all of this, it includes Celsius, Certainty, Surfactant, and a marker die so you can see where you sprayed. And what I'll do is I will link that to you here in the chat, um, Rob Falcons one. Again, man, I, it's tough being a Falcons fan, dude. I gotta tell you the story about Tokyo. I, I've told the story on the live stream before, but let me get you the link here. This is the link to to um to that so there is the kit that has celsius and certainty in it and surfactant and marker dye and for those of you here that are on youtube or facebook or twitter um celsius uh certainty kit yeah so the funny thing about the falcons while i look for the next question guys so the first time i visited tokyo visited japan versus if you ever get a chance to go to tokyo go to japan you absolutely should tokyo is awesome it's the only place i've ever visited where the first, when I was there for just a couple of days, I hadn't even left yet. And I said, I got to come back here. It's that awesome. So I've been there a couple of times. Awesome place. Highly recommend it. Anyway, when I was there, right, this was after the Falcons blew a 28-3 lead and lost to Brady in the Super Bowl. And we're in, as you know, in Tokyo, in, in the Apple store in Ginza, because I was, I think I needed a cable or something, right? And Remember, this is Japan. Like, they don't do American football. They do soccer, but they don't do American football. So the American football is not really a thing there. Literally, I walked into the Apple store and they asked, oh, you know, where you're from and whatever. I'm saying, oh, from Atlanta. They say, oh, Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, very bad. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's Thanks. Here on the other side of the world, y'all, there's probably not a, 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 an American football within 20 miles of me, but you guys, you know, the, what the, what happened with the Falcons made it all the way over here to uh, to Tokyo. But yeah, they were, they were, they felt bad for me, you know. You know, you're a Falcons, you're from Atlanta, you're from that that place that did that thing, huh? So, being a Falcons fan is kind of rough. So I figure I'd share the story in case you guys care. Probably don't, but I figure I'd share anyway. Okay, next up, I got to find out where I left off. So, so while I do that, I'm gonna put a little, L, a little LG music on. Have a sip of my. Tonight is just water and uh, Arnold Palmer. Look for the next question. Let's see, where did I, here we go. All right, next up, we have two Trilla, the Trilla from Manila. He says, happy Friday, Ron and Stripe Action Gang. Okay, I'm a little bit late, but I have to say the thumbnail is crazy. Yeah, there's a story behind the thumbnail. 
Start behind the thumbnail. I didn't do this. I did not, you know, two trilla. I didn't do this. I did not. Um, there's no way I am going to spend time trying to create a, an, an, a, you know, a way for me to, to remember that demon creature. I would not do this, but, you know, Robert took the time because he's being thoughtful. He's saying, hey, you know, I know you're going through a tough time right now, but I want you to realize how far you've come in just a couple of weeks getting rid of that mole. So here's a picture for you of Marquise, just for you. I would not, you know, come on, I'm not going to do that. But I wanted to show appreciation and everyone would get a good laugh out of it. So hence, it's the thumbnail this week. So there you go, Robert. You gave me a great thumbnail for the for the week. I appreciate you. All right, next up is Jared. Jared George. He is back again. He says, Ron, I already did my fall fungicide a few months ago, but it's here and here in the normal and rained here way more than usual. Should I look at doing another fungicide app on my dormant lawn before the spring scalp? I wouldn't, Jared. So when it comes to fungicide apps, I'm a fan of doing them preventatively in June, July, oh, sorry, in May, June, and then the second time in October, November. So May, June for preventative in the, in the spring, summer, and then October, November is when I do my preventative then. If you do that, you're gonna be in pretty good shape. The only time I would really apply fungicide outside of those, those windows is if you have an active problem in your lawn. So you know, say it's March and the lawn is beginning to wake up and you're seeing some, some large patch or some of the disease developing in the lawn, then yeah, apply a fungicide, you know, take care of it, control the problem and, and get on with your life. But outside of working on an active issue, um, I, get, I find you get great results with a May, June and an October, November uh, result. The only I, or the caveat I would say to that outside of an active problem is if you have like a green, then yeah, you're going to be doing fungicide really monthly. But if you're maintaining a green at home, you likely already know that. So hope that helps, sir. Long short of it is I would, I would not unless you've got uh, an, an issue in, uh, in your lawn. I, I really, I really wouldn't. If you did two apps over the fall, you should be in good shape. No need to to get out there and hit the lawn again with um, with fungicide. No, uh, no need. All right, next up is Ted Rogers. Is a new thumbnail showing up? No, I'm not seeing it, Ted. Please, listen, do not join in with, Ted, listen, you're better than this. Do not join in with Mark and Robert and on, on this this madness of like, you know, mold craziness. Don't, don't do that. I mean, you're, don't, I expect this from them because they just, you know, See, I have no behavior, but you don't, I don't want you, don't, don't let them be a bad influence on you. Don't do it. All right. We have another super chat. Um, this one is from Mr. LG. I knew that music would wake him up. Thank you so much, LG, for coming in. Super chat received. He says, I care about the Falcons, Ron. Not really, <laughs> but it's the right thing to say. Thanks for that sweet tango B. Oh yeah. Time for a giveaway for me to lose. We do need to do a giveaway, guys. We do need to do one. Um, we do need to do one. And what, so here's what I was thinking, right? So for next week, next week, I was thinking about instead of doing the live stream on Friday, which is normal, that we don't do one. We don't do a, um, a live stream next Friday and we're going to do it on Monday, do it Christmas day, right? Christmas day. Cause you know, one, I'm also going to be, um, I mean, that, that would be, that would be better. I think it'd be kind of cool to do it, to do it. Then it's going to be a time of the year when not, People aren't really going to be working as much, and then um, so yeah, so we'll we'll, we'll see. I'll, I might take a set up set up a poll and see what you guys think. But my plan is to schedule the next live stream for Monday, um, Monday, which would be the twenty fifth, because Christmas is on a Monday this year. So we can do we can plan a giveaway. Um, let me talk to some of the of my partners, LG, and see what kind of prizes we can come up with. I can do some stuff on the golf course lawn store. But let me see if I can get some cool swag, maybe some hats and some stuff that I can I can also do as well. So let me look into that. Um, we will let me let me see what I can uh, what I can do what we can do in that space. Um, yeah, let me, yeah. Let me see what we can do in that space because what would happen then is that I could I could announce it or talk about it next week with the details of it next week and then do the giveaway later on in that week. So if we if we had the live stream a shorter live stream say on Christmas Day. Then we could do the actual giveaway on Friday, which is whatever, 29th, I think. So we could do like just a, just four four days then, because then then I'll have like the the process of what you need to do. Normally, when I do giveaways, you simply have to just comment on the video. So that the software that I use for selecting the winners, it just it just randomly um, picks a comment. So um, so that's likely what's going to happen. But just to to make it to where 
you know people know because i didn't announce it this week we'll we'll save it for next week to announce the actual giveaway and then we can do one we'll do the the, the drawing um before new year's day like on like in the friday whatever that is i think it's the 29th that is that is the plan yeah friday is the 29th so good stuff if you're good with that we can uh, we can make that happen i'll, I'll give it i'll have a chat with the folks at miramichi and a few other people and we, we can see what we can do so we can do thank you for the super chat sir it really does mean a lot uh thank you for appreciating the falcons and um and, you know why says ron please don't talk about the falcons my goodness that game was bad yeah i don't know man you know it's funny like the falcons are like the t it's it's crazy like we have like a, an awesome stadium you would think that i mean in georgia the weather is nice i mean it's not it's not like you think that we'd be we'd be better but we're just just you know what it is they just don't hate losing enough that's the thing is they don't have that that killer instinct to get it done to go and to kind of close to close the deal out to close the deal out they just don't um they don't have it they don't have it you know what i mean so we'll see maybe one day they get tired of it maybe not in our lifetime but you know we'll eventually the falcons win will win a super bowl but i don't know i mean brady's retires so they actually have a chance now right <laughs> all right so next up is always baked never fried it says happy friday evening ron would it be advisable to mow or spray for weeds from when the weather was warm out I don't like the way the lawn looks in South Georgia and I have Bermuda. So if um, if you have weeds in your lawn now and they're actively growing, so there are weeds that, that tend to grow more when temperatures are cooler, always bake, never fried, and there are some that, that grow when temperatures are warmer. So take for example, this time of year, you're likely not gonna be dealing with crabgrass or spurge in Georgia, right? But you could be dealing with henbit, you could be dealing with clover, um, you know, other weeds that tend to grow whenever temperatures are, are a bit milder, right? Less, less hot. So, and the answer is yes. If you wanted to control those weeds now, you absolutely can do that. Uh, just make sure you select a herbicide that's correct for your grass type. You have Bermuda. So the answer is going to be Celsius for broadleafs or Certainty for grassy weeds like sedges um, or Poanua. Again, we have a kit on the golf course lawn store that has both of these surfactant and dye. Like you buy that, you, you're good to go, you know, really for several years for most people um, and that's what you would use for, for cleaning up weeds now when it's cool or and also when it gets warmer so i'll show you where you can find that if you go to shop and go to the weed killer section the very first product so we're so proud of it is this the celsius certainty kit you can see what it comes with you get celsius marker dye surfactant and certainty and because we are that awesome if you scroll down here under product detail You'll even find a video that shows how to mix said herbicide kit, how I like to mix it, how I like to mix Celsius, how to mix certainty for spot spring to get a, uh, a good result. Um, the only modification I might make to this um, always bake, never fried is if you are trying to control Poanua this time of year. The rates that are in that video, you know, before I forget, let me put this here in the link for you. Let me link this for you on the, in the chat so I don't forget. Let me see here, always bake, never fried. Um, the, the rates that I show for certainty, which is the herbicide you would use for controlling Poanua, um, they are too low. So those rates that I showed in that video, because that video was shot in July, like late July or late July, early August, a couple years ago. Um, the rates you use for certainty for sedges is quite a bit lower than the rate you would use for controlling Poanua. So if you're going to control Poanua, which is with the weed that this product is, is labeled to control this time of year, you're going to have to go up on the rate. So, um, let me see here. Let me, let me finish typing this and I will get this to you. Celsius and certainty. Uh, there you go. Uh, so the rate that I liked that you, you're, you're going to want to use for, for certainty is 1.25 ounces per acre up to two ounces per acre. So what does that mean? Cause you don't have an acre long. You're like, Hey Ron, that's kind of useful, but also kind of use less cause I don't have one acre. So how, how much do I need to use? So what, you, what I find is a, is a good rate that works well is if you take one of these large scoops, so one large scoop and one to two small scoops per gallon of water, so, so per thousand square feet, works well for controlling Poanua. So one large and one or two small in a gallon of water or per thousand square feet is a good spot spraying rate for Poanua. You mix some surfactant along with that and that's gonna provide you know, really good control against um, against POA. I've tried, so the 1.25 ounce rate, right, which is the lower end of the application rate for POA, is really just one of these guys. So just one large scoop, that is 
per thousand square feet. That is the 1.25 ounce rate, which is what the label says is the low end for what will control POA. I have found that just by adding a little bit more, so like one or so one large and then one or two small, like you get it burns down POA much faster. Like you like when I when I've done it with just the um just at the 1.25 ounce rate, what you'll find is a week, 10 days later, the POA is going to begin yellowing and it does die off, but it's it's slow. The process is slow. Um, and depending on how mature it is, that that rate might not be enough to get it. But if you go up, you bump it up a little bit in between that 1.25 ounce per acre rate and the two ounce per uh, acre rate, which again, one large and one or two small scoops gets you to, like that provides really good control against POA. So if you, as long as you do that, add a little surfactant with it, you're gonna get um, you're gonna get a good result. That's my testing that I found to uh, to work well. Hope that helps. You got links in the chat to where you can pick those up. If you have any other questions, let me know. Let me know, and it's because other people are going to ask me this at some point this winter um, and into the spring. I'll save this so I can say, hey, this this guy, never always baked, never fried, who asked this very question, and I gave him an answer. So if you go back to this timestamp in the video, you get your answer. Then they'll say, now, can you just tell me now? I don't have to go watch the video. <laughs> That's what I'll get sometimes. You guys are demanding like that. All right, so next up is uh, Brian. Is it Brian? I don't think it's Brian. I want to make sure I don't leave anyone out because heaven help me if I ever do that. You guys can be uh, can be pretty savage. Ted Rogers says, 60 watching and 60 likes. Good job, everybody. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Yeah, we got more. We have as many likes as we do people watching, which is exactly what I'm going for. Love the engagement. Appreciate it. Okay, next up is Oliver Rittem. Oliver Rittem. He says, Happy Friday, Ron. I've noticed that Essential G is way easier to apply than Carbon Pro G. Is it due to the prill size? They look to be the same, but the Carbon Pro G always seems to get stuck in the 2050p. Yeah, so it's been years since I've applied Carbon Pro G, Oliver. Um, what I have found is the, the prill in Essential G, like I've never applied Essential G where there were any chunks or, um, you know, where, where the prill, where, where was it dry and just didn't, that apply beautifully. Carbon Pro G, the last time I applied it, I did run into some of that to where I actually have to like stop the spreader or stop, stop the application, close off the spreader and like get like a, a stick and like break up little chunks. I, that's not the manufacturing process. I think it could be like wherever you're getting it, however, they're, how they're storing it to where maybe it's, it's in a place where it's being exposed to some moisture that's causing that clumping. Uh, but I have seen that. I have experienced that. Um, the la Actually, the last time I applied at Carbon Pro G, which is, again, it's been years, um, that was the behavior that I saw. Essential G, I don't get that. Again, it's just, um, like, I guess maybe maybe they dry it more as well, too. But they, but Essential G has always applied very well for me. And again, I've applied a ton of this stuff. I've probably applied more than anybody else that I can think of. So, and it, it's always been consistently good. So, uh, so yes. Uh, so, hope that helps. Um, it's, you are not the only one. Um, I'd say if you're going to keep using Carbon Pro G, maybe whenever you're picking it up, just check the bag, maybe move the bag around, make sure you can feel like there's like not any chunks in it and see if that, um, if that helps. But uh, you, you are not alone. You're not imagining it. That, that, is, that is a thing that I and others have experienced with, um, with Carbon Pro G. So you could always just use Essential G and then you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have that. And to be fair, um, Essential G, comparing Essential G and Carbon Pro G is really not fair because as Carbon Pro G is an older product, really, I've said this before, but really if you can do a comparison, comparing Humachar, Carbon Pro G, and Carbonized PN, that is a better comparison because they are, they're very similar in their content makeup. Essential G, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Carbon Pro G, Humachar, and um, Carbon Pro G are essentially half biochar and half compost. Whereas Essential G is biochar compost, coffee grounds, humate, and silicon. So it's a newer formulation than any of those other products. So that's it's really not fair to compare Essential G to Carbon Pro G because they're like, it's like they're, one is another, one is a, a newer generation of product, if that makes sense. Okay, next is Brian uh, Tanner. He says, Ron, still putting down Essential G each month here in Georgia? Yep. Can you keep putting it down, release zero every two weeks since it has no fertilizer? You could, but I don't, Brian. So I I save the liquid apps um, for the time of year whenever the grass is growing. So when it's beginning to come out of dormancy, like say early March, when the grass is starting to see a little bit of green coming in, then you by all means, feel free to put out some release zero. It's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to hurt anything by uh, by doing that. Um, 
but I, I, I tend to do granulars this time of year. I tend to do essential G year round and um, li- release zero, release 901C, Nutric Help, whenever there is some green in the lawn. That's how I like to do it. Again, it's not going to hurt anything to do it now if you wanted to, but that's, that's how I, I like to use them. So hope that helps, sir. You can do it now if you want to. Um, I just typically do. I just take this time of year just to load up on um, on Essential G. I just I tend to go heavier on my applications this time of year than I do in the um, when the lawn is actively growing. I kind of use like my maintenance my maintenance rate um, during during the growing season. So right now, I can load up. I'm not out there in the lawn. It's not getting disturbed. It has plenty of time to break down and get in the soil. So I go a bit heavier this time of year than I do springtime. So good question, sir. Hope that was useful for you. Knock yourself out. Feel free to apply, you know, at least zero, neutral kelp, um, any of those this time of year if you uh, if you so desire. Next up is Yamaha Hawk Gold. He says, hey, Ron, peace and light to you and yours as well as the chat. Looking to apply approximately five pounds of elemental sulfur per thousand square feet to bring the pH down. In my Bermuda lawn, would you recommend doing this monthly until spring? You could, you could, uh, you could um, Yamaha, and then measure your pH again in the um, in the springtime. There is a I'm trying to find a link here for you. Uh, there is a sulfate product that I like um, that I am um, that I'm trying to find here for you that works. Uh, sulfur that works uh, works yeah earth sign this is the one I'm talking about this is what I was looking for yeah this guy I'm trying to find a bigger bag yep this one so this is um, this is what I like to use for reducing soil pH over elemental um, some some elemental sulfates because what you tend to find is with the element with the elemental sulfate products they tend to be um, not all of them but they tend to have 21 um, percent nitrogen in them right so you can apply, you're putting nitrogen in the soil right now, which I mean, not, not something that, that I particularly like to do, um, but you can get the same results without applying, without you know, increasing the nitrogen content using a product like this. So let me see at, oh man, you have an emoji. I can't tell you, I can't, I can't type that. So we'll just say uh, Yamaha, let me see this, elemental sulfur. Elemental sulfur. So this is what I would go with for for reducing pH, soil pH if you're going to be doing it now, like when the lawn is dormant. If you if you're going to um, like when the lawn's actively growing where you can actually make use of some nitrogen, then sure you want to you know March April May time frame you still want to continue to work on your pH and apply it elemental sulfate. Sure, go for that. But this this product I'm linking here has no N in it, has no um, no NPK. So you can literally apply that now and. Uh, and then you're good. Uh, you're good to go. You know what I mean. So this is this will help. This will help solve that problem that you have as far as bringing your soil pH, uh, your soil pH down. All right. And thank you for the well wishes, sir. Hopefully you're getting lots of good toys for Christmas, or you're maybe you're Santa and you're buying toys, right? All right. Next up is Brian Tanner. He says I used Spectacle G, G unit, in September. I got some kind of weed or grass in my yard. I sent pics, but it was late this afternoon. I didn't have the backpack sprayer soon enough to use Spectacle Flow. Next year, though, let's see. Picture from Brian Tanner. Um, I'm looking. That looks like Bermuda grass to me. Possibly Bermuda. It looks like, yeah, it doesn't, that, that's not, that is not, um, I'll look at the picture here. That's not Nutsedge, uh, uh, Brian. Let me see if I can get the picture up here. I can show you. Um, yeah, that's not, that's not, that's edge. I mean, that, that, or that's not, um, that's not Poanua. Sorry. Um, let's so get this, get your picture to show the folks in the live stream. Yeah, that looks like, um, yeah, that's not, it's definitely not, that's not Poa. Um, it could be some parts of your lawn, maybe some, maybe some wild Bermuda, some parts of your lawn just haven't gone dormant yet, but this is his wide shot of it. If it loads. So that's what, what he's dealing with, Brian's dealing with, and this is a close-up of what he's got in the lawn. And looking at the, um, uh, I mean, that looks almost like, um, it's not a high, but it could be could be some wild, some common Bermuda that you might have. Um, 
Brian. Yeah, it's, that's that is not that's sedge. Is what I'm, that's not that's not a sedge, and that's not Coanya. Is what is what I'm trying to say. It looks almost like some potentially some common Bermuda, and it looks like it just went dormant. Like whatever that is you have throughout the lawn, because you've got quite a bit of it through. Not a quite, but you got some here sporadically through the lawn. Like that is just cool. it's going dormant, falling in the dormancy slower than the rest of what you got going on in the um, in the lawn. So. So yeah, sorry you're dealing with that, but it's um we've we've had a, I'm not sure where you are in the country, but if you're like, we've had a, like a pretty a fairly cold, cool winter here in Georgia so far. So like my lawn is dormant, dormant, like fully. There's not really hardly any green in it at all. So I'd be interested in knowing if this picture is recent, like you've got that now, or, or and if it is recent, like where in the country are you that you're still um you're still got some of that green? It looks yeah, it looks like a, it's definitely not a hybrid Bermuda. It's too. If you look at the um, like the run of the stolen, it's a little bit thick. It's thicker than what you would get um, for like a hybrid. But yeah, some kind of some kind of wild or common Bermuda looks like to me. Uh, it's not something that that spectacle would have would have prevented. So, all right, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say common Bermuda is what I'm gonna go with, Brian, based on how how thick the uh, the, the the stolen is, and just the, also the 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 texture of the um, of the the leaf of the grass. But you know what? One thing I got to comment you on. Let me look here. One thing I will comment you on. You know what? Look at that, guys. If you look in there, like right near the center, to the right of the center, if you look at that, unless you, you mowed or something, right? And look at that cut. That cut looks pretty clean. So while you do have like a weed in your lawn, right, or what you're calling a weed, it looks like whatever you're cutting with is pretty sharp because that, that cut looks pretty clean to me. It doesn't look torn or jagged. It's a nice straight cut. So, uh, so compliment you there, even though you're dealing with that. And uh, moving on, hope that helps, sir. When you once you get your your um, your backpack spray, you'll be able to move over to Spectacle Flow, the liquid liquid version. All right, next, let's see what we got here, guys. It's going to be a slow night, I can tell you. This this time of year, it's going to be slow, right? You guys, you guys don't have as many questions. It's only the diehards that are in here, hanging out, talking about grass and football. Hey, guys, on a positive note, while I look for the next question, I'm in, I, I was like number two in the fantasy football league right now, or I still am number two in the fantasy football league. So this week is my bye week. So if everybody can be healthy for next week, which I mean, I'm, I, I got to like the fantasy football gods hate me because like I got Stroud and I got uh, Pacheco. Pacheco had like shoulder surgery there the other day and Stroud is still under concussion protocol. So I just need them both to be healthy for next week. So fingers crossed for me. You know, I only got two wins and I could win it all. Two wins. We'll see. We'll see. All right, Robert Rady says, L, good idea, LG. We could auction off Marquise memory portrait. We could. You're right. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be um be mad to get, you know, I you really want to auction it off? You don't want me to, you want me to have it? I thought, I thought it was for me. You want me to give it away? To give away the Marquise, Marquise picture? I don't know. I'm kind of kind of fond of it, Robert. I don't know if I want to. I don't want to give it give it away now. And I can't talk about you if I give it away. You know, someone else will have it. And it's not. I don't think this is going to mean as much to someone else if we did that, Robert. Plus, even if we did, it's like a bad omen, isn't it? I mean, is it? This is not the kind of gift to send. It's like it's like sending someone like a pot of Dallas grass. It's just not. I mean, it's you're trying to be thoughtful, but it's kind of not a nice thing to do. You know what I mean? This is kind of like the same thing. Like you're, you're putting you're putting bad juju into into someone else's lawn care lab. I think you know I already dealt with it in my lawn. I don't think we need to be passing this passing this um this good luck charm around to anyone else. I don't know. You guys have to let me know what you guys think. All right. Next up is no name. He says late to the show, but always love to catch some good lawn talk. Hit the button if you haven't. Thank you so much, No Name. We're doing pretty good tonight on likes, but as always, if you're here, we've been sitting down and enjoying the show, be sure to hit the like because it costs absolutely nothing. It's a free way to support the channel. You guys on Instagram, you do the same thing. I mean, there's not really likes, but you can hit the heart or whatever the, you know, whatever you do for engagement on Instagram, show me some love. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. How many things in life can you do that cost absolutely nothing and can help someone else out, right? Always nice to do that. All right, Gary Keller Jr., he says, Hey, Ron, I know I've been asking a lot of granular products. I do have a flow zone sprayer, but scared to death to use on my cool season grass. Why? Why? It's It'll work on cool and warm season grass, Gary. You don't, I mean, as long as, again, as long as you calibrate it and then you mix the product that you're applying properly, you should be good to go. Really, I mean, really the only thing that's going to get you in trouble 
um, are like herbicides, right? I mean, herbicides, herbicides are the things that'll, that'll give your grass an ouchie. If you, you know, you want to stick to the, obviously the application rates for um, for any products that you apply, but most fertilizers, at least the one that we ones we carry on the golf course lawn, so the liquids, like the rates that we use, we tend to bias towards the lower end of like the amount of nitrogen hitting the uh, hitting the plant because we use it as part of spoon feeding. Fungicides, I mean, you want to obviously want to stick to the rates, but I mean those are unlikely to give the lawn an ouchie as long as you're you're spot on. Really, it's fun. It's a uh, it's um, herbicides you got to be careful with. Like that will do it. But if you have products that are correct for your cool season grass and you calibrate your backpack sprayer, there's no reason to not use it on your cool season lawn. No reason at all. I mean, there's, you know, backpack sprayers, like liquid products open up an entire world of fun. You know, you can mix and match products, you can spray fertilizer, biosimilants, your growth regulator, all at the same time. You feel like a boss out there. You can be like, you know what, you're out there like a mad scientist mixing up your concoction, you put some Primo in the tank, a little bit of Nutri-Kelp in the tank, biospectrum, get it all shaken up, and then out there spraying on your lawn, and you can feel like, you know, that mad scientist, whatever your folk, whenever your neighbors walk by and they say, what are you doing in your lawn? He's like, eh, you know, I got my, I got my special nutrient program. You don't see I'm just spraying fertilizer. I um, you know, I got my nutrient program that I've worked out and I'm, I'm you know, feeding the lawn right now. I'm putting some, you know, put my nutrient out in my, part of my spoon feeding program. Make you sound cool. And you can only do that if you have a backpack sprayer. So I would encourage you to use it. You got it. It's really not rocket science. You can do it. You're a smart guy. And frankly, you also get like the cost per application tends to be less with liquid products than granular. You know what I mean? So if you look at like Spectacle, like I don't, I don't know what a bag of of, um, of Spectacle G covers, but like one of these, this 18 ounce bottle covers like three acres, you know? So like you're not going to get three acres of coverage out of a bag of, out of Spectacle G. I know it's going to be, it's not, it doesn't cost quite as much as this, but it's um, like if you, if you extrapolate the amount of Spectacle G you'd have to buy, to get the same coverage as a single 18 ounce bottle of Spectacle Flow, it's gonna be quite a bit more expensive. Quite a bit more expensive to go the granular route versus liquid. And you, you can only apply that by itself. When you go with liquids, you can start, you can add other things, right? Like whenever I did Spectacle, um, I added some, um, I put some uh, insect, uh, insectocide out as well too. I put some insecticide out as well. So I, I do some insecticide in the tank so I can spray my, my pre-emergent and insecticide at the same time. So that's one of the, the beauties of liquids, in addition to costs, like the cost per application being less, you have more control or easier control over application rates and you can add other products at the same time. Just save yourself time when it comes to spraying stuff on the lawn, right? You can you can add a, like a full full concoction and spray it at once and you're good to go. You're off to the races. So for those for that reason, I would say get over that hump and um, and use your flow zone. Here's an easy way to do that, right? So the, the, the only way you could really mess up, Gary, is again, assuming you are mixing the products properly, right? So you're using the right amount of product with the right amount of water. So you're diluting it properly. It really then just comes down to um, that you're putting out the right amount over a thousand square feet. And the way you do that is with your walking, you know, your your um your your, your walking pace. So that's really the only thing you have to you have to get right. And it's not that difficult. So here's what you can do to kind of to get, to get into that. Um so get your sprayer, right? You know, calibrate it, figure, do the do the calculation, figure out like what kind of walking pace approximately you need to have to put out a gallon of water over a thousand square feet. And you're gonna take the sprayer and you're gonna put two gallons of water in it, right? Two gallons of water. And then just water. You're gonna walk, you just, you're gonna walk the, you're gonna mark off a 20 by 50 foot section in your lawn, that's a thousand square feet. And then you're gonna walk the lawn and spray the water over that area. And then when you're done, you finish covering the thousand square feet, you're gonna take what's left in the sprayer and pour it into a gallon container. And what should be in there is right around a gallon. You got a little bit more, a little bit less, that's okay. But like if you're, around, if you're pretty much close to a gallon, you're in good shape. As long, and just re keep repeating that until if you're way off, either increase your walking pace or slow down your walking pace until you can, you kind of get what it feels like, that the walk pace you need to have to get, to put out a gallon of product over um, a thousand square feet. And that's like a zero risk way of doing it because all you're spraying is water, right? If you ever apply water, not gonna hurt anything. So just do that a couple of times, like do it now in the off season, you know, it's a good way to get some exercise. And once you figure that out, now you're in good shape for next year. So next year you can do your pre-emergent, you can use liquid pre-emergent. You know, if you start spraying the carbon kit, which is, you know, our um, a kelp product, a soil microbial product, and either release zero or release 901C, you can spray that with confidence. You can spray growth regulator with confidence. I mean, there's a whole bunch of fun you can have with liquid products. So I would encourage you just to get out there and practice with just water because it's like zero risk by doing that. And then once you have that figured out, you're good to go. It's not that hard. It really isn't. 
So, uh, so I hope that helps. Hope that kind of gives you an idea of how you can, you know, you get better at using your backpack spray. Cause you got it, man. You got a nice piece of equipment too. So you don't want to have it just in the garage, just sitting there. You want to, you want to make it do, make it do the work. All right. Next up is Neil White. Neil White. He says, Ron, do you have any experience with Tiftop Bermuda? I'm interested in sodding my backyard with it next year. I don't have personal experience on my lawn. The turf park at Real Rollers is Tiff Tough, and it is a it's a beautiful Bermuda grass. It's a very very look, good looking grass. Um, it does wake up um, sooner in the spring, and it does go dormant later in the fall. So it's a it's a it's a nice looking Bermuda grass. The the the, the leaf texture is is fine. It's finer than um than Tiffway 419. So yeah, if you're if you're considering it, you know Tahoma 31 Celebration is also nice. Um, and Tiff Tough is not one to, you know, to not look at too. I would consider Tiff Tough for a lawn as well. Uh, so yeah, Tiff Tough or Tahoma 31 would be good choices for a new siding project. Again, the Real Rollers Turf Park has it. It's an excellent Bermuda cultivar. It looks really nice. So, um, so yeah, and if you want, I mean, this time of year, I can't really send you any pictures of it because the Tiff Tough is overseeded with ryegrass, but during the summer, it looks, uh, it looks good, man. Spring and summer months, it looks good. It's a good, great looking grass. Great looking grass. You won't be angry if you decide to go with that. I mean, granted, everybody wants to home with 31. That's like the new hotness these days. But, uh, but you know, nothing wrong with some Tiff Tough. Nothing wrong with some 419, with 419. You know, no, everyone, no one wants 419 anymore, but 419 can look really good too. It's just not as, you know, wake up as early, go dormant as late, that kind of thing. But it's, it's still a good looking Bermuda grass. Stephen Thompson says, uh, some of us do know the features, Ron. We got a special Facebook group, but I would never tell them before uh, Real Rollers did. Ha ha. Oh, the features of the new mower, the Revolution 26. Yeah, there's some, there are some new features that are coming out on the mower that, um, that you guys did not see on the unit that Alex and I were using with the video that I made, you know, this this fall. So there are some there are some features and they're cool. There's it's some there's some refinements and some stuff that you'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. They thought they thought about that. And you, I think you guys are gonna like it. And think about it, you got it for the same price. Like you're getting a better mower for that same price. So I think you guys will enjoy them when you get them. And you're not that far away. You're not that far away. You know, I think the first part of next year they're gonna start delivering them. So uh, you're not you're not too far out from getting getting your new hardware. I'm gonna be be doing a whole lot of this on the live stream when you guys get these mower. I'll be like, congrats, another mower. You know, I'll be doing that over and over and over again, but that's cool. It's, good. it's a good thing to have, good uh, good issue, good good problem to have. People getting new gear is a good thing. It's always fun, right? Next up is No Name. He says, while the brown hair is not completely frozen, it has been below freezing every night for the last week. Are you still throwing down essential G? Yeah, remember it's only once per month for me. So I only apply it at the beginning of the month. So beginning of December, I applied it. And um, actually, you know, I, I did it. Uh, if, you, I mean, if you look if you look closely in some of the, the pictures of the, or the video of when I was taking care of Marquise, when I had to go John Wick on Marquise, um, you, if you look, you'll actually see some of the prill on the sidewalk because I applied it, I applied that, uh, like whenever he started messing around the lawn, it was it was around the time when I needed to to get that done. So yes, I'm still doing it once per month, uh, no name. Even though it does dip into freezing temperatures, it doesn't. You know, you know, it's Georgia. By by lunchtime, we're in the 50s again, right? So it doesn't it doesn't stay cold long enough for um for it to be a problem. And we've been getting a fair amount of rain here too, so which is good. Uh, next up is no name. He's another question. He says, what conditions? would cause you to delay an app of Essential G. If it's gonna be really cold outside, like if it's gonna be in the 20s, I'm not going outside in the 20s to go out and work in the lawn. I mean, even even I have my limitations, guys. You know, man's got no limitations. I don't like cold weather. So for that, I would not go out and go do it. But uh, but it's the thing is, it doesn't stay, even here in Georgia, when it gets cold, it doesn't stay cold long. It, it really doesn't. So if, if, if I, we had a stretch of, of uh, you know, four or five days where it was gonna be like in the 20s, I wouldn't go out and apply essential G, not because there's a problem with doing it. It's mainly that I don't want to be outside when it's that cold. So, because really you'll apply it and, you know, if we get rain, it'll get watered in. Even, you know, a, a few days later, it's going to warm up again because as it tends to do here, because we don't, we don't get like really cold weather for extended periods. So it'll be just fine. So from a standpoint of essential G um, performing well, no name, there's not really a time of year in Georgia when I would be concerned about doing it. 
So, uh, so I hope that helps. Me not doing it is purely me being a weenie about being outside when it's cold. Jason uh, Harrison says, I agree. That looks like common Bermuda for Brian Tanner. Yep. Yep. I, I think so too, Jason. Looks like a, like some kind of common. It's just, it's that, that is, um, that's what you'll find. You'll tend to find if you have like different Bermuda cultivars in a lawn, you can see like one will go dormant sooner than, or later than the other. And that's what you'll, you'll find. So then that's what I'm, looks like I'm looking at when I look at your, uh, the pictures you said to me. All right, uh, Brian Tanner says, I'm in Woodstock, Georgia. I took the picture this afternoon. Yeah, so it's it looks, again, it looks like common. Looks like common to me. Um, could be wrong, but that's, that's what it looks like. I'll show you guys one more time. One more again. This is the wide shot. And then this up close up, that looks like Bermuda grass to me. It just looks like it's a thicker leaf, like a common, common Bermuda is what that looks like. All right, Jose A. Okay, Jose, look, man. We may have some F FSU fans here in the house. You know, we'll, we'll show this comment against my better judgment. I'm going to do it because, you know, I'm trying to be inclusive and all. But, I mean, he's out here with uh, with Roll Tide. And I will say this. You know, I think I've already said this last week, but I'll say it again. While it is true that Alabama, I mean, is probably going to be more exciting to watch than FSU. FSU people don't hate me. Don't be mad at me. It's still not fair that those guys, the kids played their hearts out. You know, they they went undefeated, even with their, like some of their star guys, like being down with a broken leg, um, that they didn't get the chance to go play in um, in the playoffs. I think it's really unfair, um, you know, because really, why not have Georgia? Why not have like Georgia, Bama, and then whoever else you guys want to have? Like that's that's what everyone really wants to see, right? I think so. You know, I'm going to a little bit biased. But yeah, I um we'll see. I mean, oh, here's the thing. They they better win. I mean, Alabama, you know, y'all, you guys, you guys, like, you know, a lot of people will argue that you took FSU spot. So they get in there and they go lose and you know, don't get into the national championship. There's gonna be a whole lot of hate behind that. So they I mean, prove them, you know, prove them right. Prove prove that it was the right call by by winning winning it all, you know? Prove that it was the right call by winning it all. If you don't, eh, it's not gonna be uh not gonna be good. Not gonna be good. But at the end of the day, it's money, man. That, I, you want my honest opinion? That's what it is. I mean, there's, they, there's, I mean, there. While there are a lot of Florida fans, um, and again, I still hold that they should have, they should have gotten a ride, um, like, you know, like the 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 Crimson Tide, like the the you know, Alabama is. I the, as far as the following and as far as just people being interested in watching, uh, like for TV viewership, Alabama from a business standpoint is probably a better choice, but in the spirit of competition, it was unfair to what happened to FSU, in my opinion. But again, I, they don't they don't care about my opinion. And there you go. If you're an, if you're an FSU fan, you're like, yeah, Ron, right on. And if you're a, if you're a um, you know you're a Bama fan, you're telling me to go pound sand right now. But there there are my thoughts on the uh, on the matter. All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, put down perennial ryegrass, they said. It'd be fun, they said. Out here cutting in 40 degree weather. See? See? Yeah. I mean, it looks pretty, but it's really cold outside having to go mow. That's that's the thing that I'm afraid of, Robert. And you gotta, you figure, we've had, it's been a, a cool winter this year. I would have to be out there with you. I'd have to be out there like you now and when it's, you know, 30s, 40s. You know, it does get in the 50s by by midday or so, but I mean, it's still going to be like in the morning when I like to mow the grass, it's still going to be, you know, 40s. That's not, that's not fun. That's a whole lot of not fun. You know what I mean? But that's your penance for messing with me and sending the marquee picture. That's why. That's what happens to you. See, you got to be out there mowing when it's, when it's cold out. You got to send us a picture though. I'd like to see how the lawn looks. If you get a chance, next time you go mow it, send me a picture of what it's looking like now that temps are getting cooler. I'd like to see how that cool season grass is holding on to its color. Uh, you know, in in um in your neck of the woods, I'm sure it's still fine, but it'd be just interesting to see like what the differences are between like Octoberish when it was like epic, and how it looks now with with it being consistently cooler. If the grass is still keeping its uh keeping its color, uh, Jason says that's your fault for staring too hard at Augusta. Yeah, there you go. You wanted these problems. You did want those problems. You wanted that that uh, that you know year round green. So you got it. Uh, Robert Rainey says at ah, Jason played TPC Sawgrass a couple of weeks ago. And that place is ridiculous in the amount of rye they have on the property. Mm -hmm. Well, it is TBC uh, Sawgrass. They got, they have a lot of money. They can, they can, they can make it happen. They can maintain it. It's no problem for them. And then uh, Robert says, "You know, you love it. It's true. He probably does. Secretly, he does. He likes dominating." All right. Next up is uh, Greg Sam. Greg Samo Samova says, "Hello again, Ron." 
So earlier this week, I had a friend who said, <laughs> another friend, so he had a friend that heard from another friend. I don't know, man, this is a game of telephone. It's not like we can get some bad advice here, but we'll see here. We had a friend who said, another friend of his say that if you don't water in your nitrogen fertilizer within 24 hours, most of it will, end, will evaporate. I respectfully disagree. I think what they're referring to is um, if you're talking about like urea, like if you're, if you're spraying straight urea, they say that, yeah, if you don't water it in, you can lose some of it. Um, but um, but yeah, that's that that sentiment. I think what they're referring to is if you're just using like a like a straight urea fertilizer on your lawn versus like pretty much all the fertilizers that we carry on the golf course lawn store, they're all blended. There are different types of nitrogen in them, and you can for the granulars, you don't have to water them in within 40, 24 hours. We do recommend it. I mean, just so that you can get in the soil and begin working. But it's not like if you don't water humic max or any of the greens grade fertilizers in within 24 hours, the nitrogen is going to evaporate. You're going to lose it. For the liquids, the majority of them don't require being watered in at all. They're like they're foliar sprays. So you can you can spray them and allow them to dry on the leaf and away you go. So I think what your friend is referring to is uh, is straight when you're spraying, spraying uh, straight urea. Uh, Greg, because that is something that is one of the fertilizers that you do want to water in after application. Um, they say for evaporation, but also to prevent um, injury from burning the grass. But uh, but for majority of blended fertilizers, that's not that's not really a thing. That's not a that's not a problem. So hope that helps. Good question. I think this was your friend who asked a friend who asked a friend was re was referring to. All right, uh, next up we have Tillman Walters. It says, does sedge die in the winter when the nights are in the 20s or 30s? It's a good question, Tillman. I don't see sedges in my lawn this time of year. I don't know if it's if they're dead, but they don't they don't like growing. They don't grow this time of year. Like this time of year, you're gonna see um, broadleaf weeds like clover, henbit. Um, you'll see poannua, but I don't see any sedges. I've never seen any sedges uh, in my lawn or any of the lawns that I look at this time of um, of year. So, um, so yeah, you, and you really shouldn't have sedge in your lawn this time of year. If you're if you're having temperatures in the 20s and 30s, it's not. It's unlikely that it's, that it's any kind of a sedge. Now, what you could have is poannua. Poannua looks similar to um, to nut sedge. It, does, it can look like some sedges because it's a finer leaf. It's a finer leaf, it's shiny, it's shiny, kind of like how a sedge is, um, and it's gonna be bright green like how some sedges are. So you might be mistaking poannua for a sedge, but it's unlikely that you're dealing with any true like nut sedge or purple sedge or yellow sedge, or any of that this time of year. It's unlikely that that's actually the case. It's more than likely poannua if it looks sedge-like uh, this time of year. And in that case, you'd still be the same product. You'd use certainty to, to, to take care of it. Uh, you just want to use um, a higher rate to get a good result. So. Hope that helps, sir. Uh, Tillman Walters, cool. Yep, good stuff. Um, next up, we have. Uh, next up, we have a typo. All right. Next up, we have uh, <laughs> uh, a question from Robert. He says it does stripe nicely. I'm sure it does. I'm sure the your rye grass does stripe nicely this time of year. Next up is Greg. He has a follow-up question. He says, uh, last Saturday, it was 50 degrees here in central Indiana. I put down 32,010. I did that last year and had a very nice green lawn most of the summer. Is this guy just full of hot air? It's It depends on what he's talking about. Like what you're referring to, I have heard that um, for straight urea, when you're spraying straight urea. And that is, um, I think it's, it's typically it's, it's 4600 is, um, I believe that's correct for the formulation you'll find for uh, for just a straight urea fertilizer. So for what you're using, I don't know what fertilizer that is. It's probably a blended product. So in that in that case for that product, you shouldn't have any shit of a problem. I mean, the you know the conventional wisdom is whenever you put a granular product on your lawn, you are going to want to water it in, or granular fertilizer anyway. You're going to want to water it in within 24 to 48 hours. Main reason for that is a couple reasons. One, you reduce the chance if any prill stay on the leaf, you reduce the chance of it burning or injuring the leaf. And given that it's a granular, it needs to be in the soil to work. So if it's sitting on the top of your lawn, it's not really doing a whole lot of good. It needs to be watered in the soil so they can begin, you know, the, the bugs can begin breaking it down and making it available for the for the plant to use. So uh, so yeah, for your 32010, you're probably just fine. Your question is a big part of why, um, why we carry these two fertilizers, where we carry Humic Max and while we carry the green grades first. So if you look at like the size of my finger compared to them, 
probably a better illustration, is like this, like a tip of a pen compared to these. You see how much finer that prill is compared to, say, this? So this, you go apply this on your lawn, especially if you have a tighter, like a tighter sand of turf, like you're mowing, you know, you're mowing a lot and your turf is really thick, you might see some of this sitting on top of your lawn. Whereas if you apply like a finer probe fertilizer like Humic Max or like one of the greens gray, like literally you apply this stuff and it disappears. You actually have trouble seeing this even when it's even coming out of, the sp out of your broadcast spreader. But when you apply it, literally it's gone. So the chances of you burning the lawn with either of these is highly, like, highly, highly unlikely. And again, in, to visit the question you asked is, if you don't water it right away, is, it, is the nitrogen gonna evaporate? No, it's not. You should water it in within 24 to 48 hours, but nitrogen evaporation is not the reason why. Okay, uh, we, next up we have, uh, da, 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 da. next up we got is Scary Peeper, super chat, thank you so much for that. Super chat received. He says, hey Ron, happy Friday, checking to see if you got my email, no need to dig, into it now, but please let me know if I, where I can send you some product to try. I, I'm trying to see, um, if you don't mind Scary Peeper, not that I recall, send me an e, can you, you mind send me the email again? Like forward it to me again, send me again, and I will, um, I'll have it at the top of my inbox, and then I will, um, I will take a look and and say, yeah, based on what it is, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'll issue it to giving it a look or, or whatever, we can go from there. Yeah, so just send, shoot me another email. Thank you for the super chat, I do appreciate it. And I see an email here from Papa Mo's Low. What did he say to me? Plastics in one bag of fertilizer. Um, I'm not sure what you're showing me here, Papa Mo's Low. I said, you said plastics in one bag of fur. Yeah, I'm not sure. I see, but I'm not sure about that. You have, to, you have to, you have to, I don't know. You have to give me some, you have to give me some context on what this, um, on what I'm, what I'm looking at here. Papa was low. Yeah, send me. Did you just, I just got a picture. You send me a picture of it. And I'll, or give me some details around the picture, and I'll be able to write you back. But yeah, scary people, send me an email. Um, if you don't mind, get it at the top of my inbox, and then I will take a look at it, and I will let you know, sir. Next up is Dan Lynch. He says, if I have beer spots in my Bermuda, can I still apply prodiamine late in late winter here in North Texas? Yes, yes you can. Because what, what you'll find, Dan, is if you have a few beer spots here and there are small ones, once springtime hits next year, um, and it, you know the grass starts growing, Bermuda spreads very aggressively once temperatures get hot, right? So once you get hit like May timeframe, it, you know, it'll spread both above ground and below ground, so both by rhizomes and by stolons. So, you know, if you're, once temperature arrives, temperature and sunlight arrive, Bermuda, again, will, will fill in and spread fairly aggressively. The only way I would, the reason I would tell you to not use prodiamine is if this lawn was established via seed, like you, this is a renovation project and you applied seed to grow it and your plan is to apply more seed next year, in that case, I would not use prodiamine in those areas, but if it's a, I think a lawn that's already there, and you've got a few thin spots here and there, and you're trying to get, you know, you want to say, is that going to prevent the lawn from growing in? No. Once we have temperature, the Bermuda that's around that area will um, will spread, and you'll be off to the races. If it's still lagging a bit, what you can do is you can plug those areas again once, like you're in April May time frame, and that will also help the area fill in a bit faster. Uh, but I, I would not, I would not skip out on your pre-emergent because uh, just then you're gonna be fighting weeds. You know, you're gonna be fighting weeds in the spring and summer, and that's no fun. You know what I mean? So there's there's ways to get if you have bigger areas, just trans, you transfer plugs, and that's that's still gonna work out okay. Um, again, the only way I would not do that, why I would still, why I would not use pre-emergent or not use prodiamine, is if you are doing a seeding, a seeding project. So which you didn't say you are. All right, next up is Robert Rainey he says, if truth be told, I overseeded thinking I was in some competition with Devin. <laughs> Just a little bit compet competitive much? He hasn't been showing pictures of his lawn, man. I'm not sure. I think he's 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 holding it you know, close to the chest until next year. Here's the thing you have to say, Robert. You really can't compare your lawn to Devin's lawn because he's got a brand new lawn. I don't think he's top dressed it yet. So I, I would imagine if you guys are going to kind of lock horns, it's more than likely going to be in the fall of next year because he's got to get you know the lawn 
fully established. He's going to start mowing it, get the nutrient program going. He's going to top dress it, I imagine, you know, early next year. And then in the fall, he'll be in prime time to, uh, to say which lawn looks better. I think that's, for me, that's what I'm thinking the way it's going to, it's going to hash out. That's what I would think. All right, next up, we got uh, Greg uh, Samova. He says, I, listen, I binge listened to a few of your Friday cast a couple of weeks ago, and you mentioned an earthway spreader you like. Can you share that again, please? I can. The one I like is the venerable Earthway 2050P. I am a huge fan of this spreader for a couple of reasons. It's um, it's a good blend between a what I think is a prosumer spreader, so it's better than like your Scott spreaders as far as construction. Um, as far as construction goes, but one of the biggest reasons why I like it is that one, it doesn't cost as much as some of the bigger units that can cost, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars for a spreader. And because it's a professional, it's considered a, uh, like a prosumer, professional grade spreader. If you go look at on the labels for like um, any of the Lebanon turf fertilizers that we carry or any of products from Syngenta, any of the professional products, like products are targeted for the, for the professional turf community, you will see a spreader calibration for earthway spreaders while you will not find one for like Scott spreaders. So for that reason alone, it's where you don't have to go out and, you know, go through like spreader conversion charts, just kind of a pain. I mean, it's not hard to do, it's just kind of a pain. It's like one more thing, right? So again, I like mine so much that I had one for years and then I gave it to, to my neighbor, Alex, and then I bought another one of the exact same model. Like that's how much I like it. The only thing I would tell you is that whenever you get it, Putting a um, a bit of Loctite on the wing nuts that hold the the, the handle in place is something that's a, it's a good thing to do. But outside of that, they're they're rock solid. It's a great great spreader. I absolutely uh, love mine, and this is the one you're going to want to get. So the uh, the 2050p Earth 2050p, and this is the link to it right here. Boom. There you go. That is my spreader. That's the one that I use. Make sure you you accessorize it properly with a um, once you get it with a golf course lawn store sticker. I um I I hear under um you know I hear that you add one of these. It adds like half a horsepower to your uh, to your spreader. You know what I mean? It definitely raises the cool factor of the spreader quite a bit. So you know, then make sure you accessorize it properly once you once you do get one. All right. Next up, we got real rollers in the house. What's going on? Lee, so in the house, man, he says, Merry Christmas, Ron, what's going on? So guys, this is the guy, you gotta ask for your questions around, you know, the new revolution. Revolution should be coming to you guys here fairly, fairly soon. But yeah, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy behind the Revolution 26. So yeah, Merry Christmas, uh, Lee, thanks for coming to hang out. Hopefully all is going well with you. Hope you got all your ship Christmas shopping done. I gotta come by the shop, man. I've been buying a little bit. See what you and uh, you and the crew are up to. See what shenanigans you're up to. I'm sure that the um, you guys might have a stack of mowers or have some 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 new stuff to show me. So I got to stop by and and take a picture. I promise I'll leave the camera in the car. I won't take any pictures of stuff that I'm not supposed to take pictures of. But you gotta stop by, stop by and say hey. Well, guys, gals, I think that's pretty much it. So here's one thing I wanted to show you guys, and you'll see the third chapter of it tomorrow. So if you go to the store, like we've been getting a lot of questions around what weed do I have in my lawn. There's, we have tons of different content on it, but um, we did a couple of blogs. There's gonna be one more that's gonna be launched here on based on weed color. So like what weeds have white flowers, which weeds have purple flowers. There's gonna be another one that's gonna be coming out here soon, again, maybe tomorrow, on um, which weeds have yellow flowers. So yellow, purple, white, and um, you know that will be, um, you, then you'll have like a little, an easy, an easy uh, guide to, to take a look at that gives you like the names of common ones, you know, dead nettle hen bit, um, explains, gives you both their, the common name and their scientific name, the appearance, why they like, what kind of, what kind of situations cause them to grow, what kind of environment they like to have. And the thing you really care about is how do you get rid of it? How do you prevent it, prevent it and get rid of it? So we got you all covered there. So feel free to check out these guys in the golf course lawn store. Again, the one, one more will be launching um, here soon. You'll have the entire, you have the trilogy, you have the Triforce on what weed do I have in my lawn? All right, so we have another super chat. Let me get that really quick. I don't want to miss anyone out. I'm just waiting for it to come in here uh, from Dan. From Dan, did I not? There we go. A super sticker from Dan. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate that. Super chat received. He says, peer character waving flags and turning around, making the buildings in front of him tremble. Well, guys, thank you so much. And on that bombshell, we will cue 
the obligatory outro music. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful and safe holiday season. Make sure you, while you're buying Christmas gifts for everybody else, make sure you get some cool stuff for yourself, for the lawn, you just have your soil test kit, your pre-emergent, your essential G, and your fertilizer to start the season out with. So make sure you take care of yourself too, while you're taking care of everybody else. Check out the blog with new content as always. We're putting out, uh, you know, we try to put out new pieces of content every single week to provide some value to you guys. And we'll plan for, to announce the giveaway next, um, on Christmas day. Um, so on, this will plan for on Christmas Day, and then the actual giveaway, the drawing will be on the 29th of December. That's what we'll, we'll shoot for. All right, so I'll make sure I have everything lined up to where I'll be able to tell you guys what some of the prizes are going to be so we can have a great time. So if you have any other questions here, um, one more we have, we'll take it. He says, I'm considering an Allet Kensington 20. I was wondering if you like the scarifying attachment on your mower. I do, I do. I do like the turf rake on my mower. I highly recommend it. It's one of the best things you can do for keeping, like burning in some incredible looking stripes. So if you're looking for a mower that has a, uh, a scarifier, good investment. Guys, gals, thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Jason says, pour one out from Marquise. From Marquise, nah, Marquise ain't getting one. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I'm not putting any respect on his name. No respect on his name. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care. I will see you guys on Christmas Day for the next live stream. Have fun. Merry Christmas. Until next time.